Test. All right. We did it, guys. We did it. We have recovered. Oh. Fucking Linux, man. What a piece of shit OS. Uh, chocolate milk. Chiron. Uh, Vim source nets. Net mapping. Now we have uh, return true. All right, now this should work. Oh, well, the server's not there. Uh, chocolate milk server, Pyron release. There we go. Ah, fuck. VTX not supported. Uh... Luckily, I made notes of that, didn't I? Kernel source VTX. Yes, I did. Just run the commands in the header. No problem. Boot this shit. This. Reset. Okay. This seems to work now. And do we get those deadlocks ever? Uh, net mapping. Net mapping here. Get rid of the prints. And we should be able to soft reboot. I got stuck. Z. That's going to NMI the other cores. And the other cores aren't checking in. I think is the problem there. Yeah, I think I need to re-NMI the cores. Um, let me let me go there. We'll go in a kernel source panic. <laughs> need to port Linux to us, call it Gamozix. Um okay, so disable all cores. Okay, that'll wait for all the cores, and this is uh, print disabling all cores. These prints at this stage are unstable, but we'll see if we can get them. Z. Okay, that soft reboot worked, but we enabled the network card on this. Disabling all cores. Okay, so it gets stuck here. That would make sense. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna wait for that. Um, loop, send an IPI to cause it to halt. Time, sleep, uh, a millisecond. Yeah, send an NMI, sleep for a milli. Um, and then if this is halted, then break. So now we'll retry. Otherwise we'll sleep. So send an IPI to cause it to halt. If it's halted, And that will block NMIs. So once NMIs are blocked, it'll just... I think this should be fine. I don't know if this will leave NMIs pending. I don't think it will. Disabling all cores. And then that works fine. 
Let's see what we got here. Oh, I think sometimes we send... I think it's possible that we can panic on another core and that NMI does not go to... That NMI gets eaten. So this was one of the things I was kind of concerned about um, was the delivery of these NMIs for our panics. Now, it seems like everything is fine now. Um... Sometimes I, I shift Z and I don't get it. And let me see if perf drops when that happens. It does. Sweet. So one of the cores panicked and tried to notify the host, but didn't. Uh, NMI. IPI. So this is trying to notify the BSP that we panicked. We're going to do a loop. We're just going to send IPIs in a loop. CPU, uh, crate, time, sleep. So we're going to let that CPU know that we panicked. We'll, we'll keep letting it know. It's like, yo, I'm dead. I'm dead. Just letting you know I'm dead. I'm, I'm dead, man. Just in case that's not responding. So this should not work. In all cases, I should never have one where a Z gets dropped. So, obviously, I can't reboot in that context. So, we can now do this. We can run this on hardware. Ooh. Um, CPU reboot. And then pull up CPU land. Got this running. Cargo run clean. Cargo run. Should be no warnings, no errors. But yeah, every millisecond, they will send a new NMI to try and get the other cores. And it seems like this always works now. Okay, so soft reboot should be stable. Z, perfect. That looks wonderful. Update your sleep API to take duration? Fuck duration, man. I hate duration. I mean, I guess it's probably acceptable. I just hate typing duration colon colon from millies 1000 every time I want to sleep. How long have you hated duration whenever sleep MS got deprecated? <laughs> All right. Oh, there we go. 18 million fuzz cases a second. Wow. Resetting VM sure takes a long time. <laughs> For what duration? Uh, duration colon colon. Uh, oh, wait, wait. Instant colon colon now or system time colon colon now minus uh, standard colon colon time colon colon Unix time epic. Uh, <laughs> this is <laughs> All right, so I guess we don't need that many sig figs. This will be FCPS. All right, we should be able to soft reboot this now. Boom! Starting soft reboot. Okay, so we can't soft reboot. Disabling all cores. Soft reboot requesting from timer. Oh, is that because another core panicked while we were soft rebooting? Starting soft reboot. Okay. What's going on here? Z. Um, 
did I get... I got mi didn't I? I think that's what's happening. Um, unless I'm getting stuck in Disable All Cores. This nightly would make it far easier. Oh, constant durations? That would be nice. Well, I, I don't care about, like, second millisecond. I don't know. I don't really like how that looks. I actually like the from millis and from seconds more than using constants. I don't like two times second. I, I, there's something, I don't know why I don't like it, but I don't. Panic, APIC, disable all cores. It's probably that print killing me. Yeah, it's probably that print. Let's see if I can, uh, let's see if we're fine now. Am I getting animide? I'm getting animide like a bitch. Um. And those. Disable all cores. If the core is halted, break. Otherwise, send IPI. That's better logic as well. Now, we're only doing this if it's online, but if it's halted, break. Otherwise, send this. We gotta eat that. Z. And I'm just panicking in a loop. Deadlock detected on panic. Panic at 87. Oops, 87. VMX on lock. Oh, that makes sense. That makes sense. Uh, we'll shatter that lock. Shatter. Unsafe. Everything's unsafe here. Okay, that should now shatter that lock. And then disable all cores. When they're done, we want to send them an init. Kernel source APIC. Actually, ACPI, init. Isn't this where I init all the cores? A 4,500. Once that has been no longer online, we want to init it. Init the core uh, once it has halted. So that'll wait until it's halted, and then at this state, we'll init it. And that will cause it to be uh, fully reset, basically, for that other core. So all the other cores will get shut up by this phase. IPI that. Break Z. Okay, what's going on now? And up six sixty eight three. Um, let's see if this repros in here. Doesn't repro here. Sixty eight three. Obj dump 
m intel d build kernel release kernel dot exe vim dash 6683 VMX off. Am I hitting that twice? Cuz I'm getting NMI'd. This will this will happen one out of eight times. And this will happen if I soft reboot on my on the zeroth core. Cause I won't NMI myself. Panic. Reboot requested from timer. And then I, if another core panics while this happens, which they shouldn't, but if another core did panic during that stage, what did we change? Did we change anything here? No, we didn't. VMX off is failing. Can we shatter that now? Problem is I'm re-entering this soft reboot. I think that's the problem. The only place I call that is from there. But if I soft reboot on my own core and another core panics or sends me an NMI, that's sending NMIs in a loop. But that should be okay, because NMI should be blocked. God damn it. Soft reboot. And we're soft rebooting multiple times. So let's see what happens here. Reset that, do this. And then here I'm going to assign this. VM exon lock is none. So we shatter that lock and then set that it's no longer locked. Maybe we can't VMX off. No, we can VMX off. I think we can VMX off directly from any state. Anyways, that'll set that. There's still a raise condition here if I get an NMI at this stage and reset. Okay, that we don't care about. That we're knitting the cores again. I think that's the problem there. So we don't init them, we'll just cause them to go halt. We wait for them to check in. We just blast NMIs at them until they halt. But then it's possible that that... Hmm. A 
also don't know how, how often I'm hitting my timer interrupts. So they might be firing way too often. That could be hurting uh, overall system perf, but that shouldn't be the issue here. Somehow I need to prevent multiple soft reboots from happening at the same time. Okay. Deadlock detected, soft reboot, 118. How? And then I can't soft reboot there. What the fuck? Uh, CPU halt. Let's just see. I should be able to recover from this in every situation. Um... Why would I ever deadlock there? And then why wouldn't I be able to soft reboot? Starting soft reboot. That means the cores aren't behaving. It means I'm unable to NMI one of the cores. Should never be the case. Hmm. Deadlock detected, and we were stored there, didn't we? Then we couldn't init them. No, we could. So we're able to soft reboot in these states. We still had that deadlock detected at one time. What was that deadlock detected? What would cause that? And then I don't get it ever, ever again. I might get rid of this NMI stuff in letting the BSP know we panicked. I'm gonna CPU halt. So I'm just going to halt. Interrupts are disabled, so... Deadlock detected. What would cause that? Um... Z, 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 Z. I got a Z until we're at the last core. Okay, anyways, I can get rid of this halt and we can see now what happens if I don't actually NMI the BSP. Problem is the other cores will eat those. So that's running. I'm basically, every time I hit Z, I'm probably halting a core. And then we get stuck. Um, so that's not related to that, which is good to know. Um, So send an IPI to the BSP, send an NMI. OK. 
kernel down complete. That means that we're not able to bring up all the cores for some reason. For some reason, I'm not able to init the other cores when I'm bringing them up. Which makes no sense because they all checked into a halt. What's up, Annette R5? How's it going? Kernel down complete. And that panic request from other core. And then we hit this. And. Okay, let's add a print in ACPI. Uh, print attempting to launch this APIC ID. I think that's where we're getting stuck. Uh, print launched. Maybe I need to re-init that if it's not behaving. Like I need a retry. We send an NMI. Is that gonna cause an NMI inside of the VM? Is that the issue? No, they're checking and halted. They check in, they halt forever. Hmm. Reboot. Attempted to launch two four six one three five seven. We got a deadlock. I don't know how that ever happens. I never lock that again. I only use it here. How would that? Okay, attempting to launch two. And two's not playing. Uh, loop. Print retry. And then let's, uh, uh, timeout is equal to, timeout is equal to, uh, CPU or time future. Uh, we'll give it, honestly, like f five milliseconds is probably enough. While that, and then we'll say uh, retry. If CPU RDTSC is greater than or equal to the timeout, we'll do this. Print retry. If this is greater than timeout, then uh, continue retry uh, and then break so somehow those cores aren't coming up which is really fucking weird
I don't know if they're like blocking and nits or something. I uh, will do a retry on a 50 milli. Just because we're printing right now. Honestly, five, uh, 100 milli is probably fine because we're printing. I just don't want it to spew too much. While the APIC ID is not equal to online, if the if we exceeded the timeout, yeah, we'll do that. This. What is this sorcery? We're doing some OS dev and rust. We're trying to debug a really weird problem right now. This is killing me. And am I? Um, wait for the core to come online. Okay. Retry that course just fucked off. That's just fucked right off. Course not responding to Ippies. Wow. Wow. Okay, I'm gonna put this halt back in here. Uh, let me check the NMI halting stuff in system manual. Instructions that cause beam exits. NMIs. If NMI is set, to, NMI exiting is set to one. Otherwise, they use the IDT. If the logical processor is in the wait for SIPI state, NMIs are blocked. Okay, we definitely want NMI exiting. Holy shit. Yeah, let's fix that one up. NMI exiting, we find that in NMI exiting. Do I not set that? I think I do. I think I actually do. Pin based. We have NMI exiting set. This also determines the interactions between IRET and blocking by NMI. God damn it. What? We have the halt there. What the fuck? Notify the BSP we panicked. CPU halt. So we send an NMI to the All right, we're going to add this back in. We're going to halt on there. We're only going to allow soft rebooting on the BSP. Um, if, if core ID is not zero, return. Uh, only allow soft reboot attempts from the BSP.
Uh, two on nine. Okay. So now that'll halt. It'll store the panic info and then it'll halt. So I think they will end up panicking on that NMI launched. Okay, so we seem fine here, no problems. I'd need to try it a bunch of times because if I, I need to make sure that this is fine. Otherwise I'm gonna have an assumption that this works. So I just wanna make sure that it can't fuck up and it looks like it cannot fuck up. So then we can release the cores. We can have them go try to do hypervisory stuff. And there they go. And we reboot. And that core's just fucking gone. How? We can't get to a soft reboot until they all check in as halted. I have to VMX off them, don't I? They're causing VM exits when they're in the root partition due to the NMI. We can't init them. We need exits on init. No, that shouldn't be the case. Um, they need to disable their own, they need to VMX off. We need to do this. Kernel source interrupts halted. This. Let's try this. Um. Take my concurrent reentrant lock three energy to solve this. It's uh it's just uh I think it's this. We're not disabling VMX. And that's causing us to be in a weird state. It. Uh, block subsequent NMIs till the next IRAT. I just don't know how it wouldn't. Respond to NMIs. It's fuzzing. Launched. Fuzzing. That seems to fix it. I'm not exactly sure how or why, though. We cannot init a processor that's in that state. Okay, and I should be able to re-init a processor. So let's go into here, 
undo all these changes. Deadlock detected. Everything's good. Okay, now what I want to do is I want to init. Once I get to this stage, I'm disabling all cores. Before I continue, and this will be uh, init the core. We'll sleep from milli after we do that as well to make sure that it's actually down. Because it's halted, it's checked in, and then we init it. And we make sure that that core is gone. And if we get an, an NMI while we're in that stage, then that's fine. We'll come through. We will re-panic. But we will still be in the disable all cores. So that is acceptable. And then eventually, all the, before we continue on and do deeper things, we will make sure everything's disabled. Okay, so this will now init the other cores, and that's fine. All right, yeah, so we send an init. Um, wait for it to halt. So send an init, wait a milli. It's a long time to wait, to be honest. But... It seems to work now. It's fucking crazy. I would have thought that I could have knit a core that's in a VM. So that VMX offs, and that might panic and recursively interrupt, or who gives a shit? And then we'll send another NMI to it, because it's misbehaving. And it'll eventually, uh, it'll eventually pass that stage. I guess we could send it an NMI technically, whatever. It's it's working right now. All right. So now this is running all the VMs, which was the goal. 12.1. Okay. And we can up the sleep. We'll up this to like 200 millis. For the prints, the statuses. So 18.6 million VM resets per second. And that's pretty good. We're actually probably like bottlenecking on actually updating the fuzz cases. Pretty fucking crazy. All right, let's go back to single core. Back to single core. Testing mode. We'll print the VM exit reason. And what I want to do is I want them, okay, hitting breakpoints. So the code that we ship up to them, we're going to change. So we'll just write that assembly. Uh, chocolate server files. Uh, vim, vim test.asm. So this is the code. What we're going to do is we will have this have an address of foo dq0. So we're going to, we're going to load from value, which will have a pointer to foo. And then we'll move from rack, so we're going to deref. This will effectively deref foo. Uh, and we'll load that into RBX, and then we'll uh, zero out foo, which will then cause all subsequent ones to panic. So this code should never crash. We're going to move into racks a zero. And we have to say quadward. Okay. So that will write this, and then we'll put an oracle here. Uh, foop, a uh, food, food. Uh, one ood food. 
that's what we got to use. So we'll load this, which will give us the address of foo. We'll then deref the address of foo, and then we'll write over value. Uh, yeah, I'll write over value with a bad pointer. So we clobber this. Okay, now what we should see is ints, but we end up hitting these because we're not resetting the memory. So now we want to make sure that we're actually resetting the memory. What is your hypervisor doing here? It's just running. It's just running this uh, this program. So it's running this program, and then we're resetting it, and then we're uh, running it again. So now we need to check memory. So this exception breakpoint that we're ignoring, but we should be seeing a breakpoint in a loop. And then if I pause that very early on, here we go. So we got a page fault, a page fault that's mapping in the memory. Then we get a breakpoint, and then we get page faults. And these should never happen because this memory should not, this pointer should never be used here. But it is because we're not resetting memory. So what we're going to do is we're going to reset uh, memory here. And basically, the way that we do this is we will have to walk the dirty bits of the page table. All right, we got to write, so we got to write some uh, relatively difficult code here. So this is going to be um, pub fn for each dirty page, mute self. And this will uh, invoke a closure on every dirtied page. I'm just going to have this fuck off to another screen. Um, OK. So what I want to do is I want to go through every possible for. So now we're going to do a scan through the page table. Um, read fizz on all these things. The balance checks on the read fizz might hurt us. I might want to map in the page table bytes as a fixed size. Um, uh, PML for ease. Th so we will get access to self.table which is a physical address of the table base. And then we will do, yeah, we got to do read fizz on these. I don't like that. I don't like that. Oh, no, translate. Translate gives a mute U8. Oh, fuck yeah. Um, and what does this take? Oh, that's on pmem. Okay, nice. Yeah, so this needs to take a pmem. Oh, yeah. We already do this in a good way. Good for us. Good for us. P. Something implements a pmem. We'll take a mute self and a fizzmem. Okay, then we'll do uh, fizzmem.translate self.table for 4,096 bytes. Um, this whole, this whole function is unsafe, but it's not. So we translate that, and then we'll turn this into a as u64. This code we want to write to be as fast as fucking possible. So we're going to say for page in uh, for, this is the PML4. For PML4E in 0 0.512. And then we have accessed in dirty bits. So we got to set those up. Let's go grab those bits quick. I think it's uh, 5 and 6 for access in dirty. Okay, 
paging four level paging and then we just need to find one of the pages access and dirty up yep, five and six so access is five pubcons page accessed u64 is one shift five uh, page has been accessed oops Uh, page has been dirtied. If the page is dirty, six, beautiful, 663, then let's PML4E is equal to a deref of PML4.offset by PML4E. If the PML4E and page present, uh, here, we're going to have to, this is going to be like really gross because we're going to have a four and a four and a four and a four. And it's going to get really fucking tabbed in real fast. Um... If this is if present is zero, continue. Skip non-present pages. Otherwise, uh, if it's zero or PML four e and page present is, uh, and this is page accessed. Um, do I make this a macro? If we're talking about low performance OS bounded fuzzing without crazy hypervisor facts, uh, hacks, is it, is it worth to create n fuzz processes to select the scheduler? Uh, make context switches between them? Or should I call each process one after another in an infinite loop? Um, I mean, you should, you should always just, you should never have more threads than you have cores. There's, there's no reason to create more processes than you have cores. So I would just, I would just create as many cores as the process allows and then, and then fuzz away. But yeah, you a you absolutely want to use all your cores if you can. A lot of applications don't support multiple uh, multiple processes. Um, and in which point you're kind of fucked, and that's why like this technology works really well. So if it is present, if present is zero or access is zero. Um, we're actually going to say, um, let access present is equal to, or this is const AP U64 page present or page accessed. Um, this is accessed and present. So here we'll say if the, if the PML PML 4E and AP is not equal to AP, continue. So if it's not accessed and present, right, then continue. I like that shortcut. Um, and that's const, so we don't have to worry about that. So and AP, if it's not equal to AP, continue, because it's not accessed and present. So and here I can say uh, print x. Uh, well, I guess we have to go through each level of the table and do the same thing. So we basically do this, and I'm trying to think if I want to use a macro for this, because the macro would allow me to expand nested. Now, I don't think anything uses the page size bit. Page size is 1. So at the highest level...
Page size must be zero. Page size must be zero. Here, page size must be one, must be zero, must be one, must be zero, must be one. Oh, this is Pat. This is for an actual page at the, f at the finale. At the very last level, when we finally hit something that is a page, which either is at the fully nested level or um, so then uh, page size and dirty. So this is page size and page dirty. So this is SD. So at the first level, we don't have it. Then at this point, this is the PDPE or PDP. And this is the PDPE. PDPE. PDP, PDPE, plan on implementing memory dedupe, um, maybe, typically dedupe is not worth it performance wise, it just, it just doesn't really get you anything, uh, you pretty much never have situations where you have multiple of the same page. And they're being used. PDPE. So, uh, yeah, I don't really have plans to. It'd be very easy to add support for it, but. And SD is equal to SD. Then this is dirty. That means the size bit is set, and then that, that implies if the size bit is present then that implies dirty, uh, dirty is ignored. And that's for if page size is one, ignored. Page size dirty. Page size ignored. Yeah, page size must be zero, ignored. So at the top level, if it's accessed and present, it has to be accessed and it has to be present. If it's neither of those, then we don't traverse. Then at this at this state, this has to be accessed and present, otherwise we don't traverse. Um, if it is page size, which means it's the end of the page, then we'll go to the next entry and we will invoke the callback. Okay. And we wanna compute that virtual address in that case. And the virtual address will be the PML4E shift by address. Where are these shifts? 39, 30, 21, 12. 39 or PML or uh, PDPE. Um, I really want to restructure this so it's not an absolute fucking mess. But I... Mm. PDPI. That's the PDP index. This is the PML4 index. 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 Take the PML4 index, then take the PDP index and shift it by 30. And that's the virtual address. And this will take a function, which is an fn mute, which will take a vert adder of the page that is dirty. I should probably use a where clause instead. We'll do that. 
where p is fizzmem and f is a function mute which takes a vert address. Okay. Then we have p comma f and the closure, which is the callback, which is an f. Okay. This is a vert adder. 688. Nope. Oh, I didn't make a curly. Oops. Down here. Uh, 681, those need to be converted. We're going to do as I size on both of these. And this is a PDPI. Why is it that you don't have to annotate the return type of the callback? Because um, it doesn't return anything. It's just a void function. You mean like up here? If the PDP and size and dirty is SD and PDP PML four, so this is constructing the virtual address. Okay, and then we just have to nest this shit a couple more times. Oh, that's not tr table either. We need to mask off the bits to get the bits that are part of the... Let tab is equal to um, PML4E and OX, OXFFF this. That'll give us the table. This is a fizz adder. Same thing here. Translate that table. And this is not PML4E, this is the PDPE. So we get the entry PDPE. Uh, PDP. Okay, so we go through those, and then this is. Here, uh, actually, just for these lines, replace them with PDP with PD. Okay, and then we or in PD shift 21. And then we have to do one more. <laughs> one more. This is PDE. This is the page table, page table index, page table entry, page table, page table index. If it's not dirty and present, always call back. If it's not dirty and present, uh, dirty. And present. Okay, we get the table. We go through every index in the table. We read it. If it's not accessed in present, then we continue. Then we get the ent If it is accessed in present, then we get the table that it points to. We translate that into this. We go through every entry in that table. We then deref it. If it's not accessed in present for that entry, we skip it. If it is, if the size bit is set, which indicates that it's a large page and it's dirty, um, uh, that logic needs to change. We actually need to do if 
we want to continue. We want to continue at that stage. So I guess here we're just going to say if page size is not equal to zero, if PDPE and page dirty is not equal to zero, then we do the callback, but we skip it regardless because page size terminates the page table. So then this logic is what we need to use for everything for these. This is PDE. PDE. And then we invoke this callback. Okay. Then at this stage, if it's not dirty and present, then we don't care about it. Uh, that's not PD, that's PDI. And then we want to or that with the uh, PTI, which is at 12. 39, 30, 21, 12. 39, 30, 21, 12. Uh, 697, yep, PDI. We don't use PTE, yep. Thank you, Rust. Okay. We get access to the page table. We go through every entry in the page table. We get the entry. If it is not access and present, we skip the entry. Otherwise, it points to a table, in which case we get the table physical address. We then translate that so that we can go through every index of that level. We should have no PML4s except for address computation. So we go through PDPs, get the index. If the page size bit is set and the page is dirty, then we do invoke the callback. Otherwise, we continue because the page size is set. Uh, otherwise, if the page size is not set, then we know that it's a table, in which case we get that table address. PDP should no longer be used at this stage. PD should now be used. Get every index in that table. If it's not accessed and present, then continue. If If the page size bit is not zero, and that entry is not, uh, and it's dirty, then we invoke the callback. And then at this stage, we'll then get the, from the PDE, we'll get the page table. And then we'll go through every entry in the page table. And if that is dirty and present, if it's not dirty and present, we'll skip it. Otherwise, if it is dirty and present, then we know for sure that that entry uh, is dirty, in, in which case we need to invoke the callback. So what I should be able to do is down here, I can now, when I want to reset the VM, I can invoke uh, at this reset and then reset memory. This will be VM dot for each dirty page. This will take in a self, a fizzmem, I can do this, right? I probably scope that. And then we have a callback, and this is the virtual address that's dirty. And we can say, print vatter x is dirty. This will have the virtual address of the dirtied page. Uh, mm. For each dirty page for page table. For each page in the page table that's been dirtied, invoke a closure that will print. There we go. And that's printing. This page is dirty. Nice. So now we have to reset that page. That's it. That's all we have to do. Um,
I'm gonna make this unsafe. Just so I feel better about myself. Then, I think if this returns true, then it's been reset. So do this. So what I wanna do is uh, dirty A and dirty B. And what I want that to do is I want uh, unsafe. And then this unsafe. Oh, we get to get rid of a scope. That's nice. Okay, and we got I, I didn't put that at the end. All right. So we should see dirty A, dirty B, and we don't want that. We don't want it to be dirty the second time we come through, but we do see that, of course we do. So then if, if the page has been undirtied, uh, any place that we do a callback, if, if it was cleaned, then PDP, This is equal to PDPE and not uh, accessed and dirty. Accessed or page dirty. Um. Hmm. Yeah, we're just gonna auto clear the bits. So we have to do the access even in these, yeah. When we descend into something that's accessed and present, we'll clear the access and dirty bits. At this stage, So at this point, we know that it's presence. We also know that the dirty bit for every other level is just ignored. Six, dirty, ignored, dirty, ignored. So we can unconditionally clear that. So what we'll do is this will clear the access and dirty. Invoke the callback. So every time we get to a next stage, this will be PD. This will be PDE. And this will be PDI. We have three things we have to update for every one of these. Oh, and this one as well. Uh, PML4. PML4I. PML for E. Okay. PDI. PD, PDI, PDE. PDPE. PDP, PDPI, PDPE. Okay, and then we have... This is the page table page table index and the page table entry. So that will clear the access and dirty bits as we do the traversal. So now we won't see any dirty B, we'll only see dirty A. Reset. Reset. Why am I not seeing dirty A? I don't read dirty it because I crash. It's correct. 
That's correct. Fuck yeah. Okay, then we need to restore that memory. To do that, we basically will do this. Effectively. Compute the offsets. We'll just say adder here. Compute the offset into the mapped file. Get immutable, get mutable access to the underlying page. We don't need that. Compute the number of bytes we need to copy, which is the minimum between the leftovers of the page and 4096. Then we copy in the bytes, and we copy those in. Oh, we, we do actually want to slice that. We want to give access. When we do this callback, we want to have the address ready. So let's grab that tab. We'll move the tab up. For all of these, tab will be computed above. Um, and then we can pass in the table. Oops. So when a callback occurs, we pass in the tab. In this case, it's the PDE and that. And in this case, it'll be the PTE and that. And this will give us a physical address of the backing page that has been dirtied. So I'll take a vert adder and a fizz adder. So it'll give us the virtual address and the physical address of what has been dirtied. And now in here, this closure will take the virtual address and the physical address. Uh, it'll take the page. And in this case, we're, we know we're only using 4K pages. So this should just work. Slice is mute. And now this will reset it. Exception breakpoint. Because we're resetting those pages now. We only get breakpoints because we, we reset the memory back to the original state. And we only set the memory back for the pages that were actually modified during the execution of the VM. So now we can see what the performance is of this. Um, I'll get rid of this print. And we'll see before it was like 3.2 million. And this will basically tell us the this is the one page reset cost. Uh, that's not on hardware. This is on hardware. 340,000 a second. God, that blows. Is that just due to the page copy? Since we have a single page copy, let's see our fastest path. We won't actually write to memory. So, oh, semi. So we're no longer going to modify memory at all. Which means we don't have to reset any of the pages. Um, cause copying that page is going to be a non-zero cost. 376. Is that the cost of doing all the memory accesses on the page table? Let me check that code gen. Let me see how good that code gen is. It might be the bounce checks on the physical memory stuff. Oh, that sucks, man. Fuck. I think it's these translates. Unless it's our mem copy. Maybe our mem copy is really slow. For PDPI and 0 to 512, yes, it is correct. It's to the number, number of entries in the table. Fuck, why is that so unbelievably slow? <sighs> uh. 
Let's check out the code gen. For each dirty page. Okay, here's the code. Is that literally calling table on itself? Move that, add that. This code gen actually looks pretty good with the exception of this call at the top, but it's not too big of a deal. Cafe. Add that, move that. I guess we've, yeah, the compilers found out a way to prove that those are inbounds. Okay, what's the access time of 512 reads? Uh, 512 reads multiplied by uh, four cycles per read, because we do dependent operations, 2048. This processor is like 3.8 gigahertz. It's 1.8 million per second. One eight million per second. I'm gonna if it's not access and present, I'm gonna panic here. Whoa. This will panic if there's modified memory. Which there never should be. We should never descend past that page, that stage. Oh shit. Okay, um, for each dirty page, and would this actually cause that page to get touched? No, it wouldn't, because this maps that page. Oh, it's accessed. Yeah, we have, we have to descend. We, we're, we're forced, uh, based on Intel, we're, we're forced to descend into access uh, tables. So yeah, it's actually many more accesses. Yeah, we can't, we can't go faster than this without using page modification logging. So this is, this is the maximum speed that we can possibly run. It's just limited based on the number of accesses. We're required to do, um, uh, the math is uh, 512 accesses on the first entry, 512 on the second, um, 512 on a third table. That's the PML4 entries, the PML, the PDP entries, the PD entries, and then also the page table entries. Add those up, 2048, multiply by four cycles per. 38, one, two, three, four, five, six. So the theoretical maximum rate that I can do this at is uh, 463,000 per second. And then, of course, there's just a little bit of other stuff going on, and that makes sense. That puts us really close to the 375. So, to make this stuff faster, Intel added a concept of page modification logging, um, which is called PML, uh, page modification logging. I forget where they document it. But there's a way that... Uh, here's page modification logging. So when access and dirty flags for EPT are enabled, it can track writes to guess physical addresses using page modification logging. And this will just queue them up in a vector. So this would allow us to literally reset at the rate that we possibly can. This is what we'll use when we fuzz actual VMs, when we're fuzzing something that we do uh, guess physical mappings. Unfortunately, I don't think I can set EPT support inside of uh, nested vert. I think that's one of the things that I'm not allowed to do in nested vert. I can do it, of course, on physical memory um, or on physical hardware. Let's see if I can get EPT running. If I can get EPT running, then we'll want to use PML, um, which is 
only supported enable PML. Uh, not all hardware will support it. It's relatively recent. Um, enable PML is here. So this also, I think, has the bit for enable EPT. So we're going to see if we can enable EPT on this. We're going to activate the secondary controls through the proc-based execution fields. Would it make sense to only walk network mapped pages um, or like only the pages that we know could exist? Yes. Yeah, we should we should have this filter down by ranges. Um, maybe. It's actually pretty difficult to do. Um, 512 times 4. I don't know how I check which pages are mapped in. Like, obviously, I can have a, a vector, a, a hash map of all the pages that we ever mapped in. I can actually have a list of only pages that have ever been written to. Um, but I, I don't think there's a way that I can filter that unless I make my own page table structure that is bit packed, that is, can be dirty. And then I can do a, a very quick scan of that. It's hard to do. Um, I would still have to do basically a memory load for every bit. If I had those in U64s, I could iterate through all the U64s. If I made a page table that was basically the, the present bits compressed, I could actually maintain that in the page table itself. How big would that metadata be? It'd be 64 times less size than the page tables. Do I just do that? Do I maintain a... Uh, do I maintain metadata of what can be present in the page table? How big is that? 4096 divided by 64. 64 bytes. So 64 bytes for every page table. That's not bad. Page tables are pretty rare. But so uh, what I'm effectively thinking is that when I map a page, I would literally have a bitmap of the present bits. And it would be like the top level, it would just be like right like this. And then those would go to a next level, which would be right the present bits for there. And basically, this outside loop would only go through pages that can that are present in the page table. And we'd basically go through each U64, and then for each bit in the U64, we could do that through rotations. We'd basically go through every bit, pick the rotate. Uh, I think that's the fastest we could make it. And then we could also have that track if they're writable. 
So we'd only do it for writable pages. So if a page is not mapped to writable, we, we wouldn't even bother traversing into it to see if it's dirtied. How fast would that be? We would still have to descend fully into one. The number of memory accesses that we would do would go from uh, 512 times four, and it would go to uh, it's 64 bytes, 4,096. If we bit pack, well, there's 512 entries. If we bit pack those, we would have eight, eight quad words per level, multiply that by four. That would give us 32 memory accesses total times four. Holy shit. Well, you'd still have to do the other memory accesses. Um, it'd be 128. And 128. That's the access time. 32 times 4. Access time. 3, 8, 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I do math on my calculator all the time, if you guys don't know. Uh, that's a theoretical limit of 29 million a second, which is well above our VM uh, enter-exit speed. I think we do it. I think we do it, guys. And gals. Oh, boy. Did this break again? This fucking cable. Oh. Damn. Yeah, that cable broke again. Dude, that cable's so bad. It's it's just the weakest fucking cable. And the the crimp on doesn't let it crimp onto the just the design of this connector does not allow the um you have to solder the outside, and you guys can't really see it because it's so opaque. But, anyways, yeah, that's, uh, that sucks. I have another pair of headphones coming, and they, they haven't arrived yet. Um, those are really nice cans, too. It's just that I need a cable with a different crimp setup. Let me see. Maybe those headphones are here. I'm going to check. Um, that would be great, but yeah, I think I would have gotten a text or something saying they sh shipped. Do do do, do 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 do. Um, arriving by Monday. All right, yeah, I'll get those on Monday. Fortunately, I don't have them yet. Does your new head headset also have socks for it? No, I wish. Do you use lazy static in your code or do you try to avoid it? I do not use lazy static. I don't use any third party projects here at all. So there's no third party code in this entire code base. Um, I guess maybe I just chill without headphones. I don't think I can have music playing through my speakers because I think y'all would hear that. I don't want to put my closed ears on. It's just annoying. What's the workspace manager you use? Uh, like my window manager is it's DWM. If workspace manager means something else, I'm not I'm not quite sure. But in terms of the window manager I use, it's DWM. Um. Yeah, we're gonna implement this. I think. Uh, this will get us pretty close to PML. Not exactly the same, but really close. So I'm gonna I'm gonna hit the head. I'll be right back. I'll answer y'all question y'all's questions. Be right back.
All right, I'm back. Uh, let's see. Had a question. Uh, I'm learning Rust, uh, and I learned Java for the first time. I wanted to ask, uh, do you define string with a string or the with the other thing? So there are two different things. So a string is actually like a heap contained value, which coming from Java, that might not mean uh, a huge amount, but it's something that's allocated like dynamically which is relatively expensive um, to do and then it places that onto the heap somewhere the other one the like slice u8 the the ref u8 where you see the ampersand and string str uh, that is a reference to a string and that's just a pointer and that's effectively free um, and if you're not familiar with pointers i would highly recommend that you go it's technically a reference in rust but it's a pointer um, i would highly recommend you go read up on uh, pointers in c uh, they're a concept that I think a lot of people don't grasp unless you learn a lower level language like C, uh, but they're, even people who do know C don't often have those things grasped. Um, so yeah, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's really cool. The fact that you can have pointers in Rust, but they're safe is mind boggling. Like you can have zero cost pointers. Stern Java, uh, terms is like a string view. String is more like a string builder. Okay. I don't know Java, so I can't make that analogy, but yeah, that sounds about right. I think EPT is worth looking into more. Um, for this case, we're not running something where we need to translate a physical, a guest physical to a host physical, because uh, we're not actually running a, we're not running an operating system in this con in this context. And let's see, I'm going to turn, I'm going to put, um, okay, I turned my speakers on, but they are like so fucking quiet, I would highly doubt y'all could hear it. And if you can, well, hopefully I won't get content ID'd. Okay, so I think what we're going to do, yeah, so EPT is amazing, and we will be using that for when we run an actual operating system in this hypervisor, but since we're running just an application, it's actually more cost to use it, like a runtime cost, because there are multiple levels of uh, page tables that have to be translated through. So it kind of increases the cost of memory accesses, especially uh, that miss the, uh, that miss the, um, uh, what's the best way to put it? Accesses that miss those, uh, uh, the TLBs, sorry. So I'm gonna make a string without asking for memory, right? Uh, no. You can reference to a string that already exists in memory, or you can create a string from something that already exists in memory, but you cannot, you cannot make a new one. So as long as you can reference something that already exists, and that might be some bytes that already exist, maybe you've received a packet, you can turn that into a string for free uh, without having to create an allocation, but you need, you need something to turn into a string. You can't, you can't just have a reference. Uh, you can't make a string out of a reference. You, you're referencing something that already exists uh, when you do that. Okay, so I think I do want to add this uh, support for the um, dirty page check. First of all, uh, page modification logging. So the dirty bit check that we're doing now, uh, we would have to do on, um, on the actual EPT structures themselves, unless the processor supports uh, page modification page modification logging, which is about three years old. So that's not something that I want to rely on in this, uh, in this hypervisor. I would do it for myself because I won't have any hardware that's old enough for that. Um, however, this is good logic to kind of implement and design because I can make this work on AMD and Intel kind of in the same way, uh, which is pretty neat. Uh, the other thing is I, I don't want to rely on a bleeding edge feature since this is open source, so I will probably detect that feature and then use it if it exists, uh, but if it doesn't exist, I won't use it, and I will have a fallback that will be very fast as well. 
So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna maintain a a table of of basically um yeah I guess I can't necessarily have I can't have a bit mask I can't have a bit mask that tells me the bits that are valid in the table. Because I, I wouldn't have a way to descend into the next table. And I think that's where it's difficult. So I could have this bit mask, which would relieve pressure on... Hmm. Where did I put that table? Does streaming make you more or less productive? I'd say it makes me uh, less less productive in terms of like actually getting things. Like right now, I wouldn't really be thinking through this problem because I'd I'd probably just fuck off for like five minutes and be distracted and then come back with a fresh mindset. And it's hard to do that when streaming. Um, so I kind of end up sitting and banging my head against a problem for a really long time, whereas I don't have that uh, when I'm not streaming. I'll usually just take a break or hop in a game quick or distract myself for a small amount of time, and that's usually enough to let me kind of think through the problem uh, without actually staring at the code, because the when you stare at the code, it's pretty hard to architect things, in my opinion. So... How would I track those? And I have to do it at every level. And I think I just need a, a, a literally another table in parallel. And that that's a pretty heavy metadata increase. It, like the construct is possible, but it's a heavy metadata increase. It also means we have to traverse an another table in parallel, which doubles our cost in the worst case, but that's fine. I mean, the worst case, everything's so fucking dirty that the cost of traversing the tables doesn't matter. Um, hmm. If I have a predefined range, well, that doesn't really matter. Ah, uh, yeah. I, if I if I give a predefined range of the max virtual address and the uh the min and the max virtual addresses, I could only go through and traverse the tables where that's set. But that could only just be one range. Um, I think my range set is too slow. I don't think it's worth. I think having a set of ranges would be really expensive unless I make a data structure designed for that. Um, and then the logic for the bounds of these uh, ranges would be relatively tough if I supply a range. Um, I would have to figure out Doing the math for these would be relatively difficult. I think I'm just better off. Let's try it. Let's just, let's do it really naive. Um, so at every level, we'll compute the virtual address. Let vatter is equal to vert adder. This is the PML4 I shift 39. And we'll, we're just gonna do this at every level. Oops. Actually, only want this part. Let vatter is equal to this. And then we'll just bounds check this. Unfortunately, it means we have to construct this virtual address. And I think it might be more expensive to construct the virtual address and check the bound. Ah, eh, it's, it's, it probably doesn't matter. Um, let vatter is equal to this. So we'll have the virtual address here. OK. 
Okay, and then for the final level, we'll do the same thing. I'll just manually whack this one in here, uh, or PTI shift by 12. That means these will all use a vadder instead, kind of reduces some of this. Vadder. Vadder tab, vadder tab. Okay, so now what I can do is I can just say uh, if the virtual address is greater than or equal to, uh, we'll have a start and an end. If it's greater than the start and, uh, we'll say if it's less than the start or it's greater than the end. Continue, skip that entry. If the virtual address is less than the start, correct? And if it's greater than the end, uh, these will be um, on every dirty page in the range from uh, start to end. And when I say square brackets on things, that means inclusive. Uh, if I did this, it would be inclusive on the start and exclusive on the end. But in this case, uh, it's inclusive for both. So that notation is something that I use in my comments, and that will let me know that. Then we bounds check all of these. Every time we construct a virtual address, we will abort if it's outside of our range. OK. So now we will pass in. Um, this is, we'll just compute end here. Once we download that, once we get that mapping, uh, I can do let uh, mapping end. Uh, compute the end of the mapped space mapping. Uh, end. Mapping end. Beautiful. Okay, so now that means that when we do a uh, for each dirty page, we will pass in the start, which is the VM base, and mapping end. Okay, so this will give us new numbers. Uh, oh, yeah, I can't soft reboot there. And let's make sure it's still working. To make sure it's still working, we'll put this print in here and we'll just make sure that it's still printing a uh, breakpoint on every iteration. That makes sure that we're still resetting that. Cool. It's pretty simple logic, so it, it's hard to fuck that up. We basically skip entries that are in a virtual address that we don't care about. And we probably should do that before we read the memory. Yeah. Um, I'm going to do that. So before we even read the memory, we will skip the index, skip that entry. That way, if you literally just had nothing in the range, um, it would just basically, this wouldn't cause any memory accesses. And then the page uh, table, this code here, we'll inline this because it's free. Um, those we don't want to inline. Translate, we don't really want to inline. OK. Uh, vadder. So bounce check, bounce check, bounce check. And then this last one, same thing. Before we actually read the entry and do the decode and check all the permissions and shit, we will bail out. OK. Now this should, once again, we'll put this in here. such that we can get this prints and everything should be breakpoints great okay so then this is the perf that we're getting natively and you know what I will up this to a second cuz I'm always scared of the cost of prints fucking with my benchmarks so the fewer prints the better 
Even just doing that RDTSC is relatively expensive. Okay, 77 million, uh, 77,000, and then on hardware, here's the real test. 10, 10, uh, 1 million. I thought that was 10 million. I was like, holy shit. Oh, that's literally exactly what I was looking for. <laughs> that 1 million a second number. Glorious. In France, we use notation AB and AB open when it's not included. Weird. I think math typically uses that. Interference is we double the vertical bar. Huh. Interesting. Huh. Okay. Well, that's a million a second. And then let's see if it scales. We've got four cores on the system, so we'll bring all the other cores online. So all the other cores will run. And here we go. Here we see what the perf is. Four cores. Should be over four mil, and at six mil. That's hyper-threading for you. Hyper-threading give, gives us, even though it's a four core system, we have eight hyper-threads. And we have so much memory access dependency and so much blocking on memory loads that hyper-threading gives us a pretty significant advantage here. And that's typically something that you see uh, when working with uh, memory-constrained applications or latency-constrained applications with hyper-threading. So there we go. That's 6 million VM resets per second. We're not actually dirtying anything, so let's put that dirtying back in here. So now this will actually dirty memory. And that number will drop quite a bit because we have to reset that. There we go. It drops right down to 5.59 million. Um, now it's resetting an actual page. And let's let's verify. Let's verify that's actually working. Because I realized that that print was doing nothing since we weren't actually dirtying, dirtying that page. But given I see that performance change, I do think that's probably the case. Oh. Okay, it's not resetting. Okay, good to know. Um, are we fucking up with these filters? Or the virtual address is greater than the end. I'm going to get rid of these filters, and I'm going to see if it goes back to being correct. Just in case I broke something. Okay. Uh, what's broken here with this logic? If the virtual address is, oh, we can't really filter on each level. We have to round each level to their nearest. Um, that makes sense. We're filtering on the top level and we're actually not doing anything on those page tables. Um, so basically we need to round the start and the end to their nearest page size boundaries. So this will do start and one shift 39 so run that down they'll run it down to the nearest boundary is that correct Start and that. So we take the start, we round it down to the nearest, and if the virtual address is less than that, so in the in this case the leet will get masked off because this is a uh, 512 gig page, so that would get masked off to there, and then we want to round the end up. So we'll do a saturating add of one shift 39 minus one. And we want to remask that. It prints fine over here. Uh, Saturating add one shift thirty nine minus one. Yeah, we'll we'll compute the bounds. Let's uh, PML four. 
uh, low. So this is the um, if we mask that down to the nearest boundary, and then we mask the high part, we're going to mask this up. So we'll do a saturating add of 1 shift 39 minus 1. Right, what's one shift 39? That's two to the 39th power. That should be 512 gigs, it is. Uh, in the same way that, yeah. So that's the 512 gigs. Saturating, add that, and then we mask that with one shift 39. And then I want to minus one from that. And not that. Because I'm dealing with... Uh, if it ends at all Fs, that will saturating add an all Fs. And then that will mask it down. And this is the end. So saturating at that... Saturating add is relatively expensive, I think. But it's kind of what we have to do here. Uh, do I just want to do contains? If it's possible that it could be contained in this boundary. Yeah, I think that's what we're going to do. Um... let vatter the vatter end is equal to the vert adder of the vatter plus one shift 39 minus one and those prints do have to actually be like that so we take one shift 39 we subtract one and this gives us the start and the end and we can say if And this is the same logic as contains. So we're going to say we have we have two different ranges, and we want to see if there's overlap. And that logic is the sh same as shared um, range set overlaps. If it overlaps. So we know those are sane, and it's just the same logic. So we'll say if the vatter is less than or equal to the start, and the vatter e oh that's the end so a dot start b dot end and then we'll do b dot start um and this is the start dot zero so these are both b and end and then this less than equal to vatter e dot zero continue if there's if there's not overlap we'll just not that because i know the logic's correct but basically we have a virtual address range if that virtual address range starts prior to the um the end and the start of the other yeah i think that's correct right these are the b's these are the a's this is a start this is a a end b end b start inclusive ranges for all of these all right we did it <laughs> we did it same logic if there's not overlap continue if there's not overlap continue
Okay, now we have to compute the end. That our end, this is now on 30. Virtual address end, this is on 21. This virtual address end is on 12. So now we won't get, these should all be breakpoints now. And they are. Okay, that means the code works. We can now go to this and see what the performance is. 365, ooh, all our perf is gone now. Yeah, because we were just skipping, we were just dipping right away. Okay, is that actually saving us anything then? The top two levels should skip. Weren't we getting this like when we did the full level? Um. Huh. Um, why aren't we getting any perf off this? Hmm. I feel like it's just not skipping anything. Panic, ASDF. Well, that's seeing, a, uh, that's seeing one reset. Is that just the cost of a reset of a 4K copy? Okay, we'll go back to not having anything dirty. So we have nothing dirty. Oops. So this will traverse the table, but it won't actually have to call reset on it. These will all be breakpoints, but it won't actually perform the copies. Yeah, 400,000. That's basically the cost of doing that page table walk. I'm surprised, because that's barely a speed up from what we were doing before. If there's not overlap, continue. Is just computing these virtual addresses that expensive? Maybe. It adds a it adds a lot of more branches here. Maybe that's hurting us. That's like the only thing I could think of is that that's hurting our saturating add can be branchless though. Well, in this case, we're not using saturating add anymore. And the saturating add version I think is I feel like it's worse. This shouldn't really be branch heavy. I mean, this doesn't have to be branches either. Well, it's one branch. It's one early branch, but the all this math could be turned into one conditional. Now, I don't know if that's the code gen we're getting. I don't know. Do I just have a, do I have another page table of the, of the bits and just go that route?
Hmm. Let's get rid of this. What's the what's going on here? Reset. Whoa. Oh, that's the that added the print. I was about to say, how is that the exact same perf as single core? Okay, this is multi-core. Four hundred thousand God, it's just so fucking slow, man. Two million. I mean, that's good, right? That's good. In the grand scheme of things, that is good performance. But it's still... It's not ideal. How the fuck are you doing that? Doing what? Two mil... So basically, I have to do 512 walk here. I have to do 512 walk here. Um. Do I just have a bitmap of present pages? I'm just so afraid that I'm gonna implement that and it's, and it's not gonna be faster. Or it'll be faster by like such a small margin that it's not worth the code complexity. And that's kind of what I'm a little spooked about. But I could track all the pages that are marked writable and then only pages that are marked writable will get updated in this metadata and then we'd have we'd basically we'd have to have a bitmap and then a table of pointers to those bitmaps it's gonna be pretty expensive because i can't actually allocate a 64 byte thing right now it would be 4k I could have 64 bits followed. No, I would want to bit pack them. And I need 4K. Yeah, I'm going to have like a lot of wasted space. Oh, I'm just I'm just getting roasted on the perf here. What's the play? For all the access things I need to write to memory. I mean, I can just not care and say that it doesn't matter. <laughs> and that 400,000 is enough. But I'm kind of not happy with that. You know? But I think, yeah, I'd have to do a, a bitmap of where pages could be. Follows the same shape as the page tables. The metadata would be relatively large for that, but do I care? Do I give a shit about memory usage? I think the answer is no. I think the answer is I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I don't give a fuck about memory usage. It's, it's a page table. It's at most gonna use a, a couple megs. <laughs> But do I care? Oh, I'm going to do... I'm just... I have to do this, don't I? I, I, I fucking have to do this. Because I'll hate myself if I don't. Could the bit shift mass thing to start end directly skip over the required range? Um... 
Yeah, I could. For, for the sub-levels, it's kind of a pain, but yes. So my theory is that the math and the conditionals that are required to construct those ranges correctly is more complex than just having it do, calculate the virtual address and do the bound. And I, I think the perf would be the same because we're not, we're not bottlenecking on that calculation. We're bottlenecking on the memory accesses that we have to do regardless. Well, I guess, yeah, that would tighten the range. Um, what's the logic for that? That being said, that still has us checking everything that could be set in the range that we map to the VM. And the VM might eventually get large. The VM might eventually be, you know, a couple megs, and we'd still have to scan those things. So what I'd really like it to do is only scan the pages that could possibly be dirtied. Um, so I'm going to check this in. Uh, this is uh, VTX with a test guest with a uh, page uh, VM resetting. If you all want to see it, I'll just push it up there right now as is. Okay, this way we can go and fuck this up. And this will have the tracking structures. This will be an option. This will be a mutable pointer to U64s, a tuple, It's going to have a mutable pointer to a U64 for 512, effectively, uh, which is actually a, a mutable pointer to the next level. I don't think it's worth using enums here, because I do want these things to be packed. Uh, I can do options. So this is the top level be an option and this this will be a a slice of option enum the enum would have to terminate because this would be self-referential as a u size yeah and basically, this is a, a this is the bitmap, and this is the that's the bitmap, and that is the tables. Um, and what we could do is we could say that tracking. Uh, tracks which pages are a uh, which tables and pages can be written to. Um, tracks which pages can be written to, and this is the first entry in the tuple points to a bitmap of uh, whether pages first entry in the tuple points to a bitmap of whether pages uh, can be written to at any point below them. I agree with that. Option mute can be optimized uh, to option non-zero. Still unstable. In in this case, we we actually have the um, we're gonna need this tuple, unfortunately. And then in the array case, there's just kind of no reason.
First entry in the tuple points to a bitmap of whether pages can be written to at any point below them. I mean, if, if we want to be technical, this is a box. of option U sizes and we can do non-zero. I feel like this will uh, coerce, won't it? I'm pretty sure this will coerce. Hey, Supercuber, how's it going? Um... Yeah, that's for non-zero. Those are for values. So the pointer should coerce. In an option. Uh, null? Maybe, maybe null? Non-null. Here we go. We want to use this. Right? non null well in this case it's it's literally this first one is u64 for uh 512 divided by 64 done the next one is a box which contains options which contain non null Um, option non null t has the same size as a mute t. However, still may dangle uh, if it isn't dereferenced. It's covering over t. Okay, this is going to hold a pointer to, it's pointers, <laughs> plot twist, it's pointers, it's a pointer to pointers, uh, ref, one, two, three on those. Is core pointer non null. Um, box missing, uh, use alloc box, box, extern create, can I do that? Can I even... Yes, I can. 175. Tracking is none. Okay. Uh, first entry in the tuple points to a bitmap of whether pages can be written to at any point below them. Um, second entry in the tuple contains pointers to oh we they need to point to this structure fuck Son of a bitch. We're gonna do this. Plus 512. <laughs> we'll have the bitmaps and then the pointers will be to the next level bitmap tables. 
No longer a tuple. It'll it'll literally point to this same structure, but of the next level. Um. New tracking. Tracking is equal to sum box new OU sixty. Can I default that? Probably not. It's too large of an array. Uh, create a new page table which tracks which uh, pages are writable. No default for that, that's fine. This will be zero for 512 over 64 plus 512. Nice. Then in VTX uh, page table, uh, new tracked tracking okay we do new tracking now when we cause an allocation we want to update that metadata Oh, brrr, free. This is in this is where we fuck things up and take big risks. So tracking has the bitmap of basically it's basically the present bits of the entries bit packed. Also virtual, free, assert, self, tracking is none, uh, freeze for tracking page tables not, not yet supported, okay. So if you try to freeze something, not supported. So all we have to do is we have to handle we could also accelerate translate. All right, when we map a page, here we go through the levels. So all that matters is every time we create a new entry, right here, tab, table, every time we create a new entry, we have to update the corresponding bits. So the table above us, That's writing in the new entry. Insert the new table. Oh, that's ref counted. Oh yeah. Um, insert the new table, new entry in the table above us. And pointer comes from do translate that entries i i minus one, which are these levels. So we'll write into the top level, we'll put a table in there. Okay, if let, uh, let tracking is equal to self dot tracking as ref mute
We want the raw pointer. Don't we? So for tracking page table, get access to that as mute. That gives us a mutable reference to the box. This is good. This is mute because we're going to replace this. This will um, track the level into the tracking table. So then what we're going to do is for the tracking table, uh, if let sum tracking is equal to tracking, um, Tracking table. Uh, then we'll add self. No, this will be a tracking table. Let's, what do I have? I have the table, I have the indices, I have my depth. So I can get my indices into the depth minus one. Correct? So I is greater than or equal to two. Update refs. So this is going to, if the entry is none, then we're creating a new table. And the level is one, entry I, I, it's gonna check this. If there's no PDPTE, then at the level above us, thus using the indices above us, um, bit is equal to indices ii minus one. This will give us the divided by 64. Uh, and then this is the offset. So then we'll have at t table index, we'll or in the one shift bit. As you size. And we'll set the bit. Um, set that there is a table at this index. Uh, moved here. Ref doesn't implement copy. Um, X as mute. And in this case, the mute's going to be mutable reference to that box. Yeah, I, I do want to work with these as boxes. 646. I don't want to move out of there, though. It will reference to tracking. But then I can't... I can't do that. Well, can I? Oh, fuck yeah. So that means I can do tracking is equal to, so set that there's a bit at this index. We got the indice for the page table or inserting. Uh, 
So the level above us, we set that bit at that index, and then create a new uh, bit index table. So let it be at ttbl 512 plus indices i minus one. Uh, actually, this is 512 over eight, right? 512 over 64. Yeah, that makes sense. 512 over 64 plus indices ii1 is equal to box new uh, box into raw of a box new of a zero for 512 or 64 and this is a box u64 plus 512. So now we set a new bit index in that table. And we into raw that. And then this is as a u64. <laughs> I love it. It's beautiful. It's art. Uh, so we basically have the bitmap there. And then here, we create the new bit index table that will be under us and we thwunk that in so the top level we have that bit set for the indice that we inserted this table into and then we into raw that we throw that into the table and indices i i minus one this is gonna break things isn't it because i need a page table Page table needs to be the same size. It needs to be the same size between 32 and 64 bit, and a box won't be the same size. Fuck. <sighs> that needs to be a a vert adder. Uh, type for the vert adder is box u64 for 512 over 64 plus 512. We're, re we're required to have this be the same shape because we share this between 32-bit and 64-bit code in memory. So 173, and I can have this be option. No problem with that. I'm pretty sure options are the same size. 64 and 32 bit. Thirty-two bit might care less about the alignment. But this will be box into raw of box new. As U64, this is the virtual address. Oof. Okay, that's a virtual address. self.tracking okay if we're tracking then get these indices then at this table so we'll reference the vert adder we can move out of that now can't index a vert adder let ttbl is equal to ttbl dot zero as mute u64 512 over 64 plus 512. Hey, Napalm, how's it going? Good morning. What are we working on? Got a cam set up. Woo! How's it going? Uh, we're doing some weird shit. We're doing some weird shit. That is a mutable pointer to that, which is true. 
So we should be able to deref that, and then, yep. Wow. Let me uh, box into raw box new. Fuck. Uh, should theoretically work. We ter we terminate the list because we don't traverse. Uh, at this stage, tracking uh, here. This is uh, next is equal to this. Oh, it barely fits. It's equal to next. Tracking is equal to sum next because we're traversing that table. So we go into the next level. Uh, this needs to be a vert adder, not a U64. Now it is. Okay. So this should theoretically not crash. And that will create those tables. So this is um, print tracking this bit uh, index and bit. Dear of X, uh, I hurts my eyes. Yeah, it's, it's pretty rough. Oh, I can't print here. We'll just panic. Yeah, fuck it. Yeah, we can we can just clean that up if you don't like it. Uh, convert the tracking table into its underlying type. Okay, so T table. You have mutable access to that. It starts out as tracking, which is the root level, which is filled with zeros. We then cast that over. We set the bit in the index at the correct position. And then we have a reference to the next table in the position below it. And we set tracking. There, the moment you snapped the stream buffer, it threw off the bits. Okay, dude, this is nuts. I can't believe I'm doing this. What the fuck am I doing? Ah, uh, all in the, all in the name of perf, man. Indices i i minus one. That'll go to the depth. Um, depth will be two, three, four. So we'll stop at three. Which means we'll fill in this indice. Uh, zero, one, two, th wait. We'll stop at three, we'll subtract one, so zero, one, two. The final entry, the final entry, we need to make the tracking tables for this stage. Tracking has been updated. If we're tracking, get the underlying type, bit index, Set it in the T table. In this case, we don't have indices ii anymore. This is gonna get really mad at me. This is depth minus one. So for the last level, they should actually construct that, and then obviously that's not used again in the scope. Uh, and this fits on one line. So this should work. This should work. <laughs> okay, it does. Uh, I, I guess I'm not too surprised yet. We're only going to do this on core zero to decrease some of this contention. Um, okay, so now we're going to make a traversal of that table. Um, FN tracking, pub FN tracking. We're just gonna we're just gonna call this at the end. Self self dot tracking. It's just gonna dump the tracking table. It's just this it's just debug. Um so what we can do is to traverse this table, we start tracking at the root level. 
uh, and we'll only do this if it's set at the end. So at the very end, we'll traverse this table. This will let us print what is being tracked. Uh, and this is not only writable memory right now. So tracking unwrap. Cool. That gets us mutable vert pointer. Now what we can do is for for each level. Uh, for tracking is equal to this. Df as dot zero as mutes u64 for 512 divided by 64 plus 512. The, st the standard. The standard. <laughs> we could make a type for that. I recognize that, and we will do that. Or not yet. Now we're going to go through the first 64 entries, or the first 512 versus 64 entries. This is going to be four bits in. Tracking dot dot 60, 512 over 64. Print the bits. This is only done when we actually create those mappings. So this will iterate through the first part. Which are all the bits. Oh, we can't fucking print here. <sighs> can't print. I guess we make this pub. And we take a closure. So we can print. <laughs> Fn... What will this take? I don't know. We'll just do it right. For bits in this, if bits zero, continue, nothing is possibly set at that level. Otherwise, something is set. We need to figure out which bit it is. For index, in 0 to 64, so we have to figure out um, experimental. Trailing zeros. Trailing zero should be stable. Okay. Trailing zeros. We're going to determine the number of trailing zeros. While bits. And if I ref that, can I make that mute? That's not valid syntax. Uh, oh, you can do that? That would be a ref. I want to destructure it. All right. I don't know if there's a shorthand for that. Um, while bits is greater than zero, while it's not equal to zero, then um, this will give us leading zeros, which will tell us the bit index, zero, one, two, three. Um, bit is equal to bits dot trailing zeros. And then bits shift right equals Mute bits and mute tracking, but this isn't a mutable reference. Um, I basically want to destructure, uh, I want to turn 
I want to copy that and yeah bits is mutable variable containing well right now at this stage bits is this is a u32 right or a u64 i typed it right but that's that's the value of bits right So then at this stage, bits shift left equal to bits plus one, or shift right equal. So now I can panic. This will give me the bit. So I'll tell me what bit was the first one. It should be zero. I guess that code's not getting triggered. Self.tracking. Panic zero. Okay. So that's telling me, and that makes sense. I'm going through all the U64s. We can do this. While the bits is not zero, then we get the number of trailing zeros, which gives us the bit index, which is set. I think I want to end that. What's up, the major? How's it going? Oh, this is brutal. Um, bits trailing zeros. I also need to track which bit index I'm currently on. I think I can do that by doing. Well, I have to do trailing zeros. Is trailing zeros expensive on x86? I don't, well, there's, I know there's LZ count. Is there a TZ count? x86? It was added in BMI one. An LZ count as its own flag bmi1 what is bmi nope not a protein bmi1 yeah uh and intel's haswell and newer that gives us a trailing zero count how expensive is trailing zero count if you don't have it is that super expensive? Maybe I should do, I mean, it's probably cheaper uh, trailing zeros. What would you do there? You wanna skip zeros? Don't you wanna skip exactly bit, not bit plus one? Uh, well, bit could be zero, right? If the trailing zeros is zero, if the last bit is set, then that would not skip over a bit. But this gives me the index of the bit that is set. This is basically unpacking a bit string and telling me which bits are set at which indices. Um, and I think I want to do and equals not one shift bit minus one. That should mask off. So if bit is zero, one shift zero minus one, and equals not that all Fs. So this will then shift, uh, this will mask off the bits that I've already counted. So. Um, let's try the logic here. But I think this should be correct. Uh, 
FN main. Let bits is equal to OB101, right, whatever the fuck that is. And I'll print the bit. And this should go from lowest bit to highest bit. Oh, uh, this last one will overflow. We have no way of masking off the top bit. So that overflows, doesn't it? While a bit's is not equal to zero, trailing zero count, break that should work right should go through one iteration zero and then if i get rid of this it should print one one um i mean i can do this And I don't know what Rust does on shift with overflows. Okay, one, three, four, blah, blah, blah. So I'll set this to all Fs. I think this will attempt to shift with overflow. This should panic. Okay, attempt to shift right with overflow. Um, Use a mask, shift it each loop, compare the mask to zero in a loop. I see what you're saying, like, or or in that bit as masked. I mean, I mean, I can literally just do this. If bit is 63, break, right? <laughs> if we get to the end, break. So this will print. Uh, and then this is where you put the code you want to work on. I don't know. Is this... I mean, we have a comparison here. While the mask is not equal to... Zero. Well, the problem is, um, yeah, I can mask off the one bit. I don't know why I was masking off everything below me. I, yeah, I was, I was getting creative there. Uh, bits and equals. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's what I had first. And then I, I was doing it stupid because I was like computing the max bit and then shifting it off, but this is just uh, one shift bit, which we know is valid. Okay, so I'll print all of those. And then in this case, this will print just the bits that are set. Okay, and what code gets emit? Pub bits. Let's see what this does. Uh, we'll get rid of this. Bits getting forward. Okay, that's relatively cheap. I think BSF is pretty cheap. Um, uh, BSF. Uh, we we want to look at uh, Skylake. OK, 
Okay, now we'll look for BSF. Uh, one cycle. Let's see, unless the shape has changed on these. Yeah. Uh, three cycles latency, one cycle reciprocal throughput. I think that's probably cheaper than what I can do. And then we do that rotate. So it, it's not even doing the mask, it's just rotating that off. That's actually great optimization. Really well done. Um, so that's basically hitting three latency every single time. Uh, that's not great, that's close to a memory access. But it's only three cycles per bit set. So if there's, if there's one bit set in there, we pay three cycles and then it goes away. We don't pay four cycles for every single uh, read that we're currently doing. So I still think this is going to be a speed up. Um, how, how fast does LZ, uh, TZ count? Uh, three, one. It's, it's the same. Trailing zero count is the same cost. So it, it doesn't... It doesn't matter if we use the most bleeding edge extensions. <sighs> Why do we need bits? The bits will indicate which pages in the page table uh, can be writable. <laughs> um, okay, so this is the official code that we're going to use. Channeling zeros and then bits and equals, not one shift bit. Um, problem is I just need to nest this now. <laughs> While it's not equal to zero, now bit indicates an index into the page table for the level that we're, we are in the tracking structure of where we can have a bit set. And I, uh, I, I really don't, can I do this with a macro? Basically, I, I want to avoid this structure, right? Where it's it's the same thing repeated in a bunch of nested uh, for loops. I'm trying to think how I can do this without a bunch of nested for loops. I don't think there's a good way. I would have to use a macro. And that would expand to what's inside. And then eventually it would... How do I even write that? That would call a macro. I could do like a zero, one, two, three on the macros. Cause the last level terminates. But yeah, this should work. This would go through all the bits. Pay one TZ count, we mask off that bit. We only loop while that's set. At this stage, we know that that bit was set at that level in the tracking structure. So we'll get the next level of the tracking. It's equal to um, tracking uh, 512 divided by 64 plus bit. So that's go to the next level of the tracking structure. And then we do this. Oops. Why did that not copy? Oops. So that will go to the next level in the tracking structure. Of course, that's unsafe. We'll just mark this whole thing unsafe for now. Make my life easier. So that'll go to the next level of the tracking structure. And then we do the same thing, right? We do the same thing four times, and that's what I want to avoid. But I don't think there's a great way to structure that. If I made a macro that did that...
the macro would take an expression of what to do on the inside. Right? Um, God. Make a lambda and call it. I, I I can fuck with that. All right, because that's going to go into the next level. And then we want to do the same thing. So if I made this into a lambda, then that lambda would have to take a closure of what to do on the inside. How do I terminate the recursion? How do I terminate the nested for loops? Because this inside, this is this is what we do next. We take this, we yoink it, and we paste it, and we tab it in. And we do this four times. <laughs> and if we do a turn option, I'm a little afraid of that perf. I go through that level. Tracking only, this will only support page, uh, page tables that are constructed using 4K paging, which is fine. Um, we'll add that extra restriction. Does this even build? It does. Tracking, and then this is not used, and then we pfft, go to the next level. Next level. Recursion with a level argument and hard code the depth. That would work. I'm I'm just a little concerned about that code gen. I don't know if that'll get unrolled. But yeah, it will be four levels. It's guaranteed to be four levels because we're gonna we're gonna do this. Assert. Um, assert the. We'll do this up at the top. Uh, only allow 4K pages in tracked mappings. If page type is equal to page type, if it's not 4K, and self.tracking is sum, return none. So if it's not 4K and we're tracking, then we got problems. Okay. That guarantees that everything in here will be four level paging. And yeah, so we could do, um, let's rec uh, recurse is equal to but they won't have their parents bits and I need to know their bit. I need to I need to know a bit for every level as well. I do think this is unfortunately probably the cleanest way to do it. Which fucking sucks. Uh one, two, three. Four. 
And that's the end. We made it to the end. <laughs> it's hideous. It's so bad. But I need to know the bits at each of the levels. This is bit zero. Yep. One, 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 two, 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 three, three. Looks almost repeatable enough to put in a macro. I just don't know how I how I get it to nest correctly. How I cause the recursion to terminate. I guess it's doable because you can have recursive macros and they would call the the one below them, I guess. Is the concern that if you recurse, it won't unroll the innermost loop because of the function calls? Uh, I mean, my concern is that if I recurse, I don't have access to the bits at each level. I mean, I can throw them into a uh, an array, but I really don't want to do that. Like, this calls for a macro, and to do that, I would do a, like, recurse four. I could do it with a macro and that would flatten the structure, but it'd still be the same amount of code because I'd still have to repeat it for each level effectively. Macro. That would have to expand to the thing below it. Just, that's fucking crazy, man. Um, Yeah, how would I even structure that macro? I can flatten the structure, but I don't want to do that. Well, if I can flatten it, then I can... So here's, here's what I'm thinking. Macro rules flatten. Uh, macro rules, uh, I don't know, tracking. Um, to do this, uh, zero, one, two, three. I can't concat the idents. Compiler will probably turn an array into registers if it can. Maybe I do just recurse it. It's 
So what would this look like? All right, let's start off with the outside. Okay, so that will go through all the bits and tracking. And then I want to basically be able to call this, but if I do this, this infinitely recurses, right? That's, that's kind of a problem. Oh yeah, we don't use it. And we do tracking, and that'll infinitely recurse. Now, I can do this, right? That can take a zero or an expert. Um, missing tokens, macro expression. In this indication, yeah. So this would call like tracking one, right? And then we could have a one that does this. How do I have that tracking the depth? Um, if I do this, this infinitely recurses, recurses, I think. Well, this definitely will. And I don't think there's a way I can catch it and do this. I don't think Rust is capable of converting that. No rules for that token. What? What? I'm so confused. Why why can't I why can't I do this? Make an argument to the macro. Uh, I don't think these macros will actually support that. I might have to just do like a closure. Why can't I? Why can't I do that? Why can't I have another? What? I'm I'm so confused. Is it comma problems? No rules for the comma. What? Holy shit, what am I doing wrong? Watch Nevada and ad popped up? I don't think they gave me partnership. 
I think they still run ads so they can make money off off stuff. Oh, is it semicolon? Semicolon. I completely forgot. Okay. Then, what I want is that when that gets to four, it stops. But it doesn't... Uh... So we got to use the, like, uh, TT stuff in this. So this will pass in foo. Um... There's a way to do this, and it's like what called it like TT Cruncher or something. Um, zero one that count experts. So we have the matcher for this. Go through the bits in this. And I don't think I can have a macro take a specific amount. I could have it start at four. I don't think I can remove expressions. No, I can. Okay, we can do this. I'm pretty I'm pretty sure we can do this. Similar to what they're doing. Yes, expert. Repetition on commas. Here we pass in ES. Um comma star missing tokens so I'll take four things it will then um, oh that's a repeating Missing tokens. I think that's at the final level. Uh, semi. Missing tokens. So that would consume that, and then we have three more. That would get repeated. Those three, that would go into this. We'd get two more. E expert. It's the final. Okay. <laughs> we basically pass it four things, and then it removes one of them every time we recurse. <sighs> we kind of want to go the other way, where we add one thing each time, but I don't think there's a way that we can do that. Um... That takes one or more, and that recurses. Can I special case it? A expert, B expert, C expert, and D expert. Can I cause that to be a like hard match? No, because I think this matches in the same way. And you can't limit the matches to a specific amount, I don't think. Macro repetition. But that's what I want. I want it to terminate when it gets there, but mm, can't really do that, I don't think. So this will, this will four, On the f four, three, 
two, one, and on the last one it does this. And at that point, this has run, maybe we need to add one more comma here. <laughs> and then bit. Uh, I can, I can do the, well, I don't have the recursion level, so I don't have that information about what bit this is. So I'd have to put this here. Let me bit o u 64 for four and then this would be bit i don't know my level yeah i i can i can actually track this i can have it start off Yeah, it can basically be this. This is the recursion expression. Starts off at zero. <laughs> so gross. Then this can be a recursion plus one. And then this can take the recursion. And then this bit at that recursion level. Actually, curious to see what this code gen will be. Uh, bit rec trailing zeros. Technically, it's just an index. Okay, missing tokens. Yep, this last one. This is the recursion. Okay, so if I add another zero in here, yes, out of bounds. <laughs> so it will it will detect that it lets me know that that goes out of bounds so we'll add zero so we'll go through all the levels and this is the final thing we do so at this point we've accumulated these bits oh fuck this will take a, a function and we're just gonna pass it the the bit indices, we'll actually just, we'll pass it uh, u32. No, we can construct the address. I'll rewrite this in lambdas after the stream. I just don't know if the lambdas will uh, condense. They might. Um, yeah, lambdas, you just capture bit, and then you pass the recursion level, and then when you get to the max recursion level, I mean, we could see, we could see if it's uh, inline never here. So we can write the same thing with recursion, right? Recursion's a lot easier here. Let recursion is equal to this. This has the recursion depth uh, track. It's equal to recursion. This will then, for the bits and tracking, it's just this. And then this will call track rec plus one. And this will be if rec. If rec is for else recurse, and then here we can do uh, track zero. Um, what? How do I name that?
Type annotation needed bits. That captures tracking. We need to pass in the tracking here. Um, yeah, why is that not happy? Why does that need a type annotation? Rec? Oh, recursion. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, not from the scope. How how the fuck do I do that? I'm. I thought it was just this. Rec. Can do U size here. Let's see if we can. Oh no. <laughs> What's going on, Desi? Um. Oh yeah, cause this yeah. I yeah I see what you're saying. Um. Yeah, we're just gonna do it this way. <laughs> All right. Tracking, and then let tracking is equal to. Um, none. And this should get really mad at me. Well, we'll set this is 5u32. This should get mad. Because that's actually making recursive. No? Shouldn't that shadow for here? I guess we got to pa pass in the tracking too. ref tracking okay then this will pass in uh, tracking is equal to and we'll pass in tracking uh, this is tracking 512 over 64 plus rec Right in PHP, hell yeah. Ref deref of dot zero as ooh as mute u sixty four five twelve five twelve or sixty four plus five twelve. You have 128 viewers. What a nice number. Indeed it is. Oh, yeah. This is tracking. Noise. Uh, okay, so that will fill those in. And then at the final depth, the virtual address is equal to bit zero shift, you can say vert adder, bit zero shift 39, 
or bit one shift 30 or bit two shift 21 or bit three shift 12 uh call back vatter so i'll invoke this callback and i'll just say it's a function that takes a vert adder expected u64 for all these things yeah okay call back and then tracking we will invoke tracking ourselves over here after that we do our first mapping We'll do uh, vm.pagetable.tracking, and then this will take a virtual address, and we'll print vatter panic foo. So that should print what has been mapped. Vatter.0. Hey, yo, what's up, Basharak? Here we go. Uh, we page faulted. Trying to access. We got a null DRF, a null ED. How can that happen? How can that happen? Each of the levels, do I just want three levels? No, I want four levels. Check the bit. And I pass in tracking, we go through that. I'm just gonna do a call back with a bit rec. Vert adder, just so we can see what that actually prints. Still got our page full. We got a zero, then a zero, which I think is correct. Um, we'll do rec shift 32 or this, just so you can see what depth we're at on the recursion. Zero, and then this is level one, which is zero. The address is leet 1337. That fits in a one gig page, so that is true. So that means we're not setting up this box correctly. This one's fine. This one, if we're tracking, then we set tracking to next. This is U64, box in a raw. We link that in at indices I am minus one as a U size. 512 over 64. 512 over 64 plus recursion, which will be zero. Oh, whoa. This is bit rec. As you size. What? Uh, oh, that bit is a U size. Okay, this should work now. Probably won't get a page fault anymore. We got a foo. So we stopped? Why would we stop though?
We go to the bit rack, just zero. Then we hit foo. And what was foo for? That's when we're done with the tracking. Um, go through the bits. I kind of would expect us to go into a next level. Do you know how random number generation works with big ints and rust? I'm not sure. That would be library specific. Unless you're talking about the big ints library, in which case I'm not familiar with it. Get the bit. There's the bit. Bit record, uh, bit at the recursion level, plus that. That'll deref, then we cast that into a pointer to this. We ref deref it. We then call back that. Next recursion level, we pass in tracking. Why does that stop? So we're finally getting to a page. This would be um, hex this divided by two megs. This is the level we're at. It's the first non-zero one. 99. Divide by 64. Bit index. I think that's it. Well, it wouldn't really explain why this is happening, but we'll try it. Page vault. There we have a at two. We have a nineteen, which is ninety nine mod forty in hex. Yeah. Right. Yes. Sweet. So now that's getting to that level. Now we're at two, and we then grab. Um, index bit, uh, do the callback, and then we try to go to that next level, and apparently this is null. Somehow, that becomes null when it shouldn't be. Uh, cert tracking is null. I think I can do that, because it will coerce into a pointer. No, I guess not as pointer assert that it is not null should never be a situation where we have a null there okay and yeah so we have the bit oh it's not just that it's the depth into here It's not just a bit. Ah, yes. The bit will be we'll add i i times sixty four plus this, and that's actually what we want to store. This is i i times sixty four plus this. Uh, let t z is equal to trailing zeros. plus tz, and then this is trailing zeros. That then computes the actual index, because we have to add the index that we are into tracking, times 64, plus the tz, which is the mod. Then we can use that value, which is the bit rec as u size, 733, uh, iter enumerate. Okay, can't add TZ. II is U size, as U size, fuck it. And then this is now U sizes. 
fine with that. It cleans this stuff up, although it fucks up the other stuff. All right. I think in this case, this is actually the least amount of code. All right, so this will now work. There's the address. Okay. So now that'll invoke. That'll invoke that closure. And then here we'll do under tracking just so we don't have that warning because it doesn't know for the final level of recursion. And then we have the virtual address here that could be mapped. And then we pass that information along. And there we go. So this allows me to see all of the memory that's mapped in my address space. So every time that I map something in, I'll print. Uh, Leet. We should have mapped something else in there. Um, oh, I think I'm always shadowing it here. This is at the end. Oh yeah, I don't think I need this at all for the final level. It's just the bits that matter on the last level. Uh, go through these and then we get to the final level. Uh, indices I, I. Oh, we need to set one at the, hmm. That's indices I, I. Because the top level always has the table. So I'm not setting the top level right now. And then the, the, the last table. Yeah, so these should be indices I, I instead. Now this is all gonna be all sorts of borked. But I think we start off. Yeah, so those are busted. Um, Uh, man, this is fucking rough. I think at the top level, entries I, I, entries I, I, how do I set it in the top level? It's not present indices, indices, I, I, but we never go through indices zero. One to depth. What? This is for translate. How am I actually setting up that top level? I mean, clearly I am. Translate entries I, I minus one. That's pointer. Oh, yeah, we do, we do effectively use that here. Okay. So that makes sense. And then I need to set it for the last level table. 
This is only when I create tables. And I don't create tables for the top level. So this will go back and create those. Well, the top level, this will fill in. Obviously, this works for the top level. This sets, this sets in the bits for the top level. The problem is the last level never gets a table. Um, so here, we want to do depth minus 2, because that's where we stop. And then we write to depth minus 1. So at depth minus 2, but we write that in. Got it to work. Commenting everything, then uncommenting it works somehow. <laughs> Funny how that always works. <laughs> I have minus one, mod 64. We fill in the table above. When we create a table, we then say that we have an entry. Pointer is lagging. Pointer is the entries at minus one. Correct. So we write in to that as we offset. Yeah, translate entries i minus one. What I want to do is t table index. So that's the existing one. So at the existing one, we fill in the indices to point to a new table. And then when we get to a the max level, which is a we get a three. And here I want to set the page table bit is for the last level. So yeah, that would go through uh, what is that? We set that to four. One, two, three, four. So that will perform four writes. So I don't want that. I don't want to make that last level. But then what is this doing? This this crashes. Leet leet, and then that's crashing when it's doing the walk. Index is depth, indices depth minus one divided by 64, mod 64, t table, tracking. Tracking goes to the next. At that point, we filled it into four different levels. Then down here, one, two, three, four. That sets the bits for all the levels. And then we call tracking. Is it just making that null pointer that's crashing? I don't think so. I think that's actually trying to access that memory. Let's take a look. Uh, 13268. Yeah, and I'll add. that print back in so we can see the walk that's occurring. Um, what? Then we do the callback while the bits. So you have a 99, then a 170. And that's those bits. Yeah. So that's where the 170 comes from. And then we do it again. Translate. Invoke that. All right, what's...
We mapped in two. So at this stage, that's one walk. Then we have a 9A. 45. Oh, because we don't up, uh, we don't. We need to walk the tracking table regardless of if we're creating things. So that's the issue. If we're tracking. Then we need to read the entry. And next in this case is this. Really? How did that get deleted from my pace buffer? This paste, okay. As you size, let next is equal to this. Uh, TTBL this. We gotta cast that shit. This is a walk the table. Set that is equal to vert adder next. So we read the entry that we just set up. Okay, so now we'll walk the table regardless. There we go. One, three, four, four, five. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. Woof. Now, and this is uh, traverse the tracking table regardless of if we created a new page or not. That we update the tracking table for the final level. We shouldn't need that box. The last level is literally just the bits because we don't traverse into that. But why? Why do we why do we need to do that? Oh, because we have the assertion for that. Well, it can be null if we don't set this up. Because the last tracking entry is dead. Okay. I, I, as you 64 times 64 plus TZ. All right, this will then print those addresses. Perfect. Now, that means that instead of calling tracking there, we'll call tracking here. I nuked a friend, didn't I? No, I didn't. Now, for each 30 page, we will do tracking. It takes an address and a page. And I need to walk the page table to follow that. But this is going to have a print address. This will print the dirtied address. So, so I'll take a page table or a fizz adder. Okay, then this callback we will call with a fizz adder zero. And this is going to clobber a bunch of shit. Uh, tracking. Expected one argument. It's going to need, it's going to need fizz mem. I mean, we'll just use this. D. Paste. Okay, and we'll want these. Uh, 
Axis and present. Axis and dirty. Dirty and present. Now, we use tracking. That sets up all this shit. And this is for each dirty page. Noise. Expected four arguments. Yep. Bye bye. Now it's just two. Okay, now I actually want to process that page table. So we'll start off at the root level. Uh, so we'll have, we'll pass in table.table .table, or self.table. .table. That's the physical address of the page table. We're going to go through these bits. If the bit is set, then that will compute. This is the let page frame number bits rec p is equal to pfn. So uh, compute the page number, page index, or whatever. Then this will take a page table, which is a phys adder. This is a page table, which is a physical address. Then we're going to say if, uh, OK, for this level, table is equal to page table. And then we'll translate that using phys mem.translate this for 4096 as mute u64. Okay. Bits rec self.table tracking. Recursion, that, and tracking. Recursion, that, and tracking. Recursion. And then this is the table. Uh, next table. Something like that. So what we're going to say is if table.offset, um, this is the page table entry. Table on offset the PFN as an I size. Then we're gonna say if the PTE, if the page table entry and um and access and present is equal to AP continue. If it's not equal to AP, continue. Otherwise, PTE and equals not AP. So we'll clear the access and present bits at that level. 760. Uh, oh, DREF. This is uh, get the page table entry. Um, Skip the entry if it's not both accessed and present. This is uh, clear the accessed bits. Clear the access bit. Okay. Oh, we do kind of want that. It's wreck. Oh, bit wreck. PFN. Next table not found in a scope. So that will come from uh, lots of Fs. Uh, 
uh, compute the uh, physical address of the table slash page. So this is the PTE. Seven seventy. Uh, let's next table is equal to this, and then we pass that into the next level. Okay. Uh, accessed and dirty. Here we'll not AD. Clear the accessed and dirty bits. Okay, at the final level. Um, if recursion level is zero, then do this. Uh, if it's three, else do this. Accessed and dirty. Oops. 79. Oops. Text width is 79. Okay. Access. Uh, dirty and present. So if we're on the final level... Then we'll check, and if it's not dirty in present, then it's not a page we have to reset. Then that'll go to the next table, and then this will have the, um, this will just have the page table here. Okay. Uh, do I not have a print? I do. I do have a print. That's not a good sign. If the recursion level is, let's say, four. Keyboard, like the sound? Hell yeah. Um, okay, that means the dirty bit's not set. Oh, we're not writing to it. That's what that means. So this isn't printing anything because we're not writing to it. So now we can write to it. And we can reboot it. And now that page will be dirty. Yep, we have that one dirty page every time. So if we're at the final level, if the Entry is not dirty. And I'll do this. Yeah, that's fine. If it's not dirty in present, then we continue. If it's not access in present for the other levels, continue. At the final, well, at all levels, clear both the accessed and dirty bits. Compute the physical address of the table or page, and then we go into that next level in a loop. Then we call this. Okay, so we did it. <laughs> so now we get to see what the cost is. And let's make sure that's resetting it. It definitely is, because we're getting that print. So that one page is getting reset. And there we go, exception breakpoint. And if I didn't do this callback, then it would crash. Yep, because we're not clearing that. And we're only clearing the one, and we're only traversing into tables. Nice. Nice. Okay, so now we can get rid of the print. Okay. This is the single core performance. Uh, we gotta ship a new bootloader.
So I gotta I gotta reboot this because we changed the shape of that. So we need a new bootloader because the uh, page table structure changed shape. Oh yeah, thanks for all the follows, everyone. There's been a bunch. I've been kind of on the grind here. Haven't been paying too much attention to the chat. Sorry about that. All right, so what do you think the perf uh, numbers are gonna be? It was 400K before. We, we spent like two hours writing some very difficult code. I, I, I really hope it's a perf improvement. Oh, there's one other thing I can do. If the raw and page write is not equal to zero, we're only going to do it if page write... Oops. Oops. Only if the memory has been marked as writable <clears throat> will we set the final level. But here it is. Oh, that's the F. 985! <laughs> yeah, we got all the perf back! <laughs> Fuck yeah! Okay, I was not expecting that. I was expecting like 600, 700. That's fucking gnarly! Okay, that's pretty sick. <laughs> wow! 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 That's some next level shit. Well, I'm glad I understood why I wanted to write that data structure. It turns out it's actually a really good data structure for what we're doing. It's a, it's a, a pretty exotic data structure. But you can't, you can't argue with that. 984,000 fuzz cases per second on a single core. That's, oh, that's resetting a dirty page. So let's see our best case scenario, just checking. Uh, just checking for the presence, but not actually having to restore a 4K, because restoring memory is expensive. Here we go. Well, on real hardware. 1.2 mil! <laughs> yes! Holy shit! The second we have to reset pages, our perf just tanks. But we're just scanning the, the, those bits and going into the next level, scanning those bits. Wow. Wow. 1.3 million VM resets per second. Holy shit. Well, that's definitely the best perf, perf I've ever had for VM resetting. Dude, now we have to graph it. I'm going to do a sweep of uh, with respect to number of dirty pages. We're actually going to slightly tweak this. Let's see if this is deterministic. It should be. 1.284. Reset. One point two eight six. 1.286. So what I can do is the VMs can actually alias the memory directly out of um, uh, is right. Thank God I have that parsed out. That's cool. So uh, right. Is it just right? Okay. So if it's a write, then we want to do this. Um, if it's a write and this. If it's a write, then we want to allocate a page and we want to pull that in from the uh, remotely mapped memory, right? And let's make sure we initialize that in the net mapping to zero. I want to make sure the rest of the page gets zeroed. I 
I think I did actually remove that. This is the new page. New page to receive to 4096. Copy from slice. Uh, it's just to the end. Uh, for each. Iter mute for each. Uh, X is zero. So that will uh, zero out any remainder of the page that will not be uh, copied into. So to receive is how much we expect. It's either 4K or the size minus the offset into the page or the, the size, yeah, minus the offset into that, okay. So that will zero out the rest. And now that means what we can do is we can actually alias memory. Um, so if it's not a write and it was this, then what we can do is we will, uh, we will actually, we're gonna have to touch that memory because it's not mapped by default, but let's, let's try this. So, get access to physical memory. And then on the page table, we're gonna do a, oh, this is globally. This is on um, page table is equal to core page table. Lock. Method not found. Uh, page table. Boot args. Okay, we get the page table, and then here we'll make that mute. And this is uh, get access to physical memory. This is uh, get access to the uh, host. Uh, yeah, to the page table. Host page table. And this will be let page table is equal to page table uh, as mute, unwrap. Now we're going to do page table dot translate using pmem. Using pmem, we're going to translate the virtual address that can be found. At the offset into the map file. Uh, so compute the offset into the map file. Uh, we do that for both, so we'll just do it for both. That's the offset into the map file, and then that means from the mapped file, which is mapping, we'll just touch the offset. Uh, well, we won't for now, but We will look up mapping offset as pointer as U64. And we'll just print that. That should be none. But we're going to use this to translate. It should be none because we don't... Um, it hasn't been touched by that phase at the start. Um, yeah, in that case, we never map it. Wait, I'm actually really surprised that that is present. Why would that be the case? Oh, because this... Does that cause it to exist? We can do mapping as pointer offset offset as I size. I want to see if this returns none. And I'm just gonna panic on the first on the first instance of this. Cause I I kinda expect that to not be um translated. Wait, 
how did we build that without unsafe before? Oh, I think offset is what's unsafe. That makes sense. Okay, so why does that exist? Translate will... I don't know why. It shouldn't be mapped in yet. Right? Oh, there is no page. I'm stupid. <laughs> this whole time it says uh, that uptime must be a lie. Yeah, there's like 12 hours on top of that. Uh, page is none. Yes, so it's not mapped. Perfect. Okay, that's what I was expecting. So we'll do uh, page table translate. Uh, here we can do offset as I size or offset as pointer. And then here we can dot map x x dot page dot flatten and then this is page is equal to unwrap or expect uh whoa um mapping page not mapped uh flatten okay so that will give us a, this should just be a fizz adder, just to be explicit. Ah, there we go, that's why we do that, dot zero. Okay, this should panic, whoa, page not mapped. Now to do this, we're gonna do a unsafe core pointer read volatile mapping offset um touch the mapping to make sure it is downloaded and mapped right so we're gonna read that volatile that'll cause this to not panic and then we'll uh yeah we have these fuzz kids a second now these are bunk right because these are these are hitting the same actually these shouldn't be surviving Yeah, we're hitting that page fault in a loop. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna map that into the... Yeah, so now we have the physical address of that. Uh, let page is equal to this. Okay. Uh, this is look up the uh, physical page backing for the uh, for the mapping, and then we will map raw page dot zero user present not writable. Uh, Expect page table, and this is uh, translates the mapping virtual address into a physical address. So what we've done here is uh, 219. Yeah, fuck it. Get access to physical memory. Then we're going to get the host for the a small amount of time. We're going to get uh, access to the host memory. And this unsafe map in the page. Unwrap. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to, when the VM is only reading a page, it will literally use the exact same page that's used for the backing mapping of the VM. <laughs> so this means when we have 
all the VMs online, they all alias their read-only pages, which is much better for cache uh, because all of them go into the shared state. It's a reduction of the memory usage. So basically, that we just implemented copy on write <laughs> is what we did. So we just implemented copy on write such that VMs only have a unique copy of pages that they modify. If they do not modify a page, they just point directly to the network map memory. Okay, so now we can see what this looks like. Yeah, it's a little bit faster. So uh, 1.28 million fuzz cases per second on a single core, and then let's see what we hit multi-core. <laughs> Hope you feel what I'm feeling great. Seven point nine million fuzz cases a second on a fucking quad core, on a quad core. <laughs> Holy shit! Oh, that's what I like to see. Compare that to your fork performance with AFL. <laughs> that, my friends. Is this the fastest hypervisor reset in the world? Uh, very likely. <laughs> very likely. <laughs> Prob probably. <laughs> so this is going to dirty one of the pages. Oh, 252. Oh, it's already mapped. Ah, yes, because we can't promote the page. So... Um, map raw. Honestly, I think we just translate there again. We do this. Uh... Translates the guest memory into uh, the components, into its components. So we translate this, we go through, and then we get the. This is how I'm. I actually intended for this to be used. Um. And I don't know if I need the invil pig here, but that's something we can always figure out a little bit later. Uh, this is uh, this will give us a we want the PTE at this stage. Flatten. And what we can do is now that we have a PTE is equal to this. Uh, Well, if we just write directly the first time, if we write directly to it, then it won't be present, and we need to create the mapping. Uh, so I think we'll do if let sum PTE, so we translate it. We get the PTE for it, and this is not this. It's the, this is the adder.0 and not OXFFF. And we flatten that. So this is, if this page is already mapped, we are doing copy on write and need to promote it to its own page. So then we'll do um, PTE. 
uh, mm write fizz pte, and we're gonna write in page dot zero and then these bits. Yoink, paste, or. So there we write over the PTE for the page. Otherwise, map in the page because it's the first time that we're actually accessing it. Uh, page table. Uh, oh, this is the... You know, this is page table. This is vm.page table. So we're going to translate. If that is already mapped, then we're going to promote it to a new page. And I don't know if we need the invil pig there. I don't think we do. Um, let's print the status. It should be breakpoint on all of them. OK. Ah, that promotion is causing it to not be in that table. All right, so uh, page right on this filter. We'll get rid of that filter. This is just going to have all pages right now. Because we're not informed that that change has occurred. OK, there we go. So we have breakpoints all of these so then we copy on write pages okay and then we can reset this and reset this okay this is 6.8 million a second with one page getting dirtied and then without dirtying that page it'll go back to the 7.9 or whatever it was Uh, on hardware, here we go, 7.8 million a second. Yep, so I want to improve my mem copy. Uh, yeah, let's see, what are we getting? We're, we're going to dirty some pages. Times 4096 db0 baz dq0. We're going to write to move quadward baz0. And baz2, uh, baz2. All right, so this will dirty a, a couple more pages. So our perf is going to start dropping, right, because we're resetting more and more memory. Uh, there's really nothing we can do about that, right? If those pages are actually dirtied, we have to reset them. So the more pages that are dirtied, the more cost it takes to reset a VM because we have more to reset. Can't do anything about it. But what we can do is try to improve our mem copy in the same way that we improved our mem set. So we're going to take a look at uh, uh, shared core source lib. All right. And for, for x86, so mem copy we'll call mem move. And for x86, we will use that. And for x86.64, we will make a new implementation. So you have a pure Rust version for that. And then mem move will be pretty similar to this. Um, we'll have a source. We'll have a dest. Uh, so this is the source, or the dest. Then we have EAX doesn't need to get set here. RSI. This is the source register. Destination, the source, and RCX. And we can do uh, rep moves b but we can't because there can be overlap so we need to implement that correctly so we'll say um compare the source with the dest 
if uh, at the end we'll do CLD, clear uh, clear the direction flag. If and if we do um, Yeah, for copy backwards, we actually want to do. What does that do? Um, I think it writes then decrements. Um, they're incremented or decremented automatically. So after the move, incremented or decremented. Okay. So uh, I think here's what we'll do. This will be easier. This is copy forwards. Otherwise, we'll copy backwards. And in this case, we'll do des dot offset n minus one. You guys, that old code. Else, yup. Yup. <laughs> Set the direction flag, clear the direction flag. In this case, the direction flag doesn't need to be restored. So this will be copy backwards and this is copy forwards. So this will do a rep move speed and we'll set that to offset n as i size minus one. And then this will be offset this and as i size minus one so both the source and the dest will seek to the end right so we seek to the end for both the source and the destination and we perform the copy rcx is n rep moves b this technically changes flags well it doesn't it restores them is rep moves b faster than sim copy yes it is Quite a bit. Uh, x86.64. Okay. Right? Is this correct? <laughs> we seek to the end. Yeah, des plus n minus 1 and source plus n minus 1. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. And then rcx is n. Yep. And then copy forwards, we got the desk and the source. Oh, and those are clobbers. RDI and RSI get clobbered. So does RCX. Do I not have clobbers marked here? I do not. EDI, ECX. EAX. That could be like some of the most confusing fucking bugs by not having those marked clobber. Same with these. RDI, RCX, EAX. I guess EAX doesn't get clobbered, but I'd rather fail closed than open. RDI, RSI, RCX. Yep, all those get clobbered. Okay, so now let's see, 575, and we'll see if we get faster. Oh, it's actually slower. Huh. The mem set was faster. But apparently the mem copy is not faster. I, I require seal these always cleared, but yeah. Um, what's going on here? I didn't turn off threads or like do something major, did I? I don't think so. Reps D and mo uh, remainder moves B. It shouldn't matter. It shouldn't matter with modern string stuff because the processor just knows to do that. The processor actually like will write them cache line at a time with the moves B. Let me 
kind of surprised by that. I, I don't know if I'm like getting incorrect results. Let's see if it got hurt in here. Ah, I can't soft reboot. Unless I like turned off threads or did something stupid, but I don't think so. Yeah, it seems to have hurt perf, which is weird because the mem set was definitely faster. The mem set was absolutely faster when we did uh, Repstos B. But I, I guess the moves B isn't faster for some reason. I can try it, but uh, I have to do like div remainder, which is annoying as shit. Um, move RDX RCX. Test it without. I, I have to use it. Um, shift right. RDX by three. Moves Q. Move RDX RCX and RDX three rep. Moves B. Correct. That's not necessarily handling alignment and stuff. I think that is correct though. No, it clear it clearly isn't. We 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 busted it. Um Oh, uh, move RCX, RDX, RCX. Here we go. That's the problem. And then we have uh, S. Okay. Move RDX, RCX, restore the original, and then and it. Move SB. SQ is eight. Yeah. Uh, that is seven. I think that's correct now. <laughs> Isn't it? God damn it. It doesn't like it for some reason. Uh, shift right. Move as Q. Oh, um, I think this is an issue if... Uh, it's zero. Test RDX, RDX, JZ, U2, F. Honestly, same with the other case as well. Even the moves B, I think. Oh, uh, yeah, I want sure RCX. You're totally right. I I can't remember. Yeah, I feel like I think rep doesn't do it if RCX is true. Hey, we did it. Filled the netmap file. Okay. Um. Oh, it's fucked though. It's bur It's borked. It's borked. Something about is fucked. These looked broken too. No. Save that. Shift RCX3. Move SQ. Move that. Restore that. And the remainder. Move SB the rest. RDX clobber. RCX RDX. Yep. Unless it is the zeros where I need to check for the zeros. Yeah, I'm not sure.
Well, I don't really want to figure it out. This is working. All right, and we know that works. Reset. Turn down the complete. Back to 5.7. Then move too hard. Yeah, I think... Uh, for the mem set, it was absolutely faster to do the rep uh, Strosby. Um, and I'm going to add a thing here. I'm going to say if n is 0, return, just in case. Uh, return s. Return s. LVM should be good. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely going to SSE it out. Like, that, it's going to SSE it out with and without the... It'll, like, find the right padding. It'll find the alignment. It'll then use uh, SSE instructions. Um, it'll do it quite well. But the, the, the rep Stosby was much faster for mem setting, but the mem moving seems to be slower with the string operations. Kind of surprised. Maybe it failed to optimize them with uh, assembly implementation. That could be. That could be. Well, it wouldn't actually optimize those. Well, maybe having the inline assembly, it gets really confused. Because this, it doesn't really take anything. But yeah. Anyways, that's 5.8 mil. So now what I want to do is we're going to have this right to pages, and we're just going to have pages here. Uh, align 4096, pages, uh, D -D, uh, db0 times, doesn't even matter, uh, uh, 1024 pages. Yeah, we'll go to like 32 times 1024. How big is that? Come on, Nazem. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. It's not that big. All right. Uh, L E A R D X R L pages. Move. Uh, RCX will just already have the field. Test RCX, RCX, JZ, end, uh, short end, loop, deck, RCX, JNZ, short loop, move, RDX, plus, and we can do uh, XOR, Move RDX 5, and we'll just do D word because it's fastest. And then we'll add RDX 4096. So we're basically, this is going to up to the number of pages specified in RCX. It is going to write to each page with a 5. So if you specify 0, it'll LEA this, which isn't a memory operation. It will jump 0 to the end, and then we'll int 3. Um, And then if RCX is set, we will then loop while decrementing it and adding 4K to this, uh, writing 5 into there, and then we'll loop until RCX becomes 0. So this will dirty the number of pages that we set in RCX. TLDR, that's what it's doing. Okay, so now what we can do is we can actually specify when we go to run it, uh, on a reset, vm dot guest regs rcx is zero. So this will um, this will be max speed. This will be the like eight mil or whatever. Ten mil, ten mil a second. Whoa. 
And then if I set this to one, this should now dirty one page. And the number should drop. And it didn't. Uh, okay, so then this is failing. Maybe my code's not doing the right thing. LEL RDX pages. All right, let's see if we're... We should be hitting breakpoint for basically all of them. We are. Okay. RCX is one. Ten mil. Set RCX to a hundred. Now you have a hundred dirty pages. This should drop. It does. Wow. All right. So now what we can do is we can do a sweep over these ranges. Uh, and we'll go single threaded for this. Oh, mm. Um. So we're doing a benchmark, right? I want to plot a graph, uh, and we'll spend probably about a millisecond on each. Um, see what the output of the compiler is due to all the clobbers? Yeah, I... RSI, RDI... One thing about mem... Yeah... There's nothing I can do about the clobbers because I, I have to implement it the same way because it can't get inlined since it's the mem set. Like, Rust will generate mem sets and mem moves for small copies. Uh, it'll call that function for larger ones, and it, it's literally a call. It won't be able to inline that code because it's an extern. So, sadly, I have to conform... Check with object dump. I don't want to rewrite the code. <laughs> um, this code. I can, I can, I know what it's going to look like. It's going to be a push. Uh, it's going to push just. R sign RDI or args. Uh, it's going to have to flip those, I think. And then RCX and RDX will get pushed. But that's it. Uh, this is min move. Um. Yeah, it looks pushing R sign RDI. Kind of surprised. Because those are clobbers based on the API. Um, doesn't really matter. I guess unless I'm doing a bunch of small min moves. And then, yeah, it's literally just doing that. It's doing the compare and then it jumps here. But... And then this is the backwards case. So technically, it would probably be faster to do an overlap check rather than the backwards forward check because this is a little bit more expensive. This is effectively free, right? This is like, this is uh, one and a half cycles. No, this is one, this is one cycle. So this takes one cycle to execute. This takes zero cycles to execute. So the overhead's basically nothing here. It's it's just the moves is slower. Uh, return S. Okay. Noise. So how do I want to do this? Uh, 
Um. Um. Test VM follows cases. Starts a timer. Prints all this information. I want to do. Um. Reset memory. Compute the number of bytes to copy. So I'm gonna bump this. Is that gonna be high enough to average from a single case? I don't think so. Here's what I'm gonna do. It's weird. But um, fuzz cases, load, ordering, relaxed, mod, 1,000. So they're all going to have like a random amount, and then we'll bucket the results. Um, obviously, that's, that's the average. That's 500 pages dirtied, right? That's the average. Uh, and that's why it's so stable. Because um, if we set this to 500, it should be basically the same number, the 2.280k. Okay, it's double apparently. Maybe there's some bias on this. I don't. I don't. I don't really care. It doesn't matter too much. Uh, as long as that's kind of sampling the different types, then uh, we'll do let's. Uh, too dirty is equal to this. So this will track the number of pages we want to dirt. Number of pages we want to dirty. Um, too dirty. So we'll, re we'll dirty that many pages. And then I'll want to track those statistics. Uh, I guess I don't want to do random. For fuzz case in 0 to 64, uh, we'll do fuzz case. Mod that. That way it's a little bit more linear. It's not so aggressive. 251. So I would expect that to be the same as 500. Oh, it's not. Yeah, I I see. Okay. Because it's not it's not a linear curve necessarily. I mean, it should be at this range. Ah, uh, well, whatever. Let mute stats is equal to a vector. O U 64 for. What is that number? 32, 32 times 1,024. These are our buckets. So then we'll do... We will determine the amount of time it took to reset with a certain dirty size. So we're going to dirty this up, and then we're going to track the reset cost. Um... Yeah, there we'll set that. This will track uh, let me dirtied is equal to zero, and then dirtied plus equals one. That's the true value of number of dirty pages. Let it is rdtsc. Let's, and then here we can do stats dirtied plus equals RDTSC minus IT. So this will track for each bucket. It's going to accumulate the time, uh, the time, uh, the cycles for that, and then we'll want to keep. Uh, this is uh, 
dirty cost. And this is uh, num tests. So dirty cost here. And dirty or num tests. plus equals one. So for each record that we have, we will fill that in. Local variable. Um, dirty cost. So that's just to reset it. I guess we're not including our overhead which is actually entering and exiting the VM, which I probably should do. Um, yeah, we'll do like, let me start is equal to none. Then we will start a timer. Let's start, uh, start is equal to sum CPU RDTSC. So we'll start a timer here, we'll enter the VM, we'll do all our shit, we'll come back around, we'll dirty the memory, uh, we'll restore all the memory, and then we'll stop the timer here, and this will be uh, start, uh, if let sum start is equal to start, then we'll update these stats. So we basically, and then too dirty we just set to a random amount. So this way, the whole thing is counted, but it's counted starting from here, entering the VM, doing all the stuff, coming back around, not using IT anymore, resetting everything, and then we update those stats. And we print and do a bunch of shit, but we're, we're running so many numbers that we're averaging this shit out, so it doesn't matter. Deadlock detected 118. Hmm. Still don't know why that's happening. Must be like a really strange race. But it, it shouldn't be able to happen on the same core. So I'm kind of confused by that. Um. Oh yeah, it might be the race condition in our deadlock. Maybe it can give a false positive on uh, the deadlocking. Okay, so then what we do is... We're recording the stats, that's only for one core, but we can multiply it by two. All right, so what we're gonna do is every iteration, we're gonna print stats for bucket. Uh, we'll print the bucket ID for bucket in zero to We'll just do 10 for now. 12.1 uh, FCPS, fuzz cases per second. Um, so what we're gonna do here is we'll get the dirty cost for the bucket, or for uh, dirty pages, five, and this is the bucket Dirty cost as F64 divided by dirty cost num tests. And that is the average cycles per. And then E kernel source time. I want to get the RDTSC frequency. TSC megahertz. Yeah. So now I have that. Uh, let cycles per is equal to this as F64. So cycles per, and this is the, that's the cycles per iteration. And now what we wanna do is we wanna figure out what that is in fuzz cases per second. So to do that, we're gonna get the time TSC in megahertz. We're gonna divide that by, we're gonna multiply that by uh, one million. So that's the TSC rate 
in cycles, and then we're going to divide that by the cycles per, and that should give us the fuzz cases per second. I think. Megahertz times that. That's the cycles per second. Divided by that. Dirty cost. Num test. Uh, this bucket. Oh, num tests. Number of tests. Uh, dirty cost divided by that. That's the cycles per iteration. Then we take the tick rate. We divide that down by that. So the, the larger this number is, the fewer fuzz cases we get per second. And we should be able to now see 185. OK, we got a lot of noms going on here. Hmm. Uh, is this code not working? Move dword five and RDX. Add RDX four thousand ninety six. Deck RCX. Jump non zero short loop. Jump zero. Well, that should be correct. Maybe my reset. Maybe my memory tracking stuff is broken. I'm like really skeptical. I'm gonna print dirtied this. Zero one two. Why would that only ever be those? One, two, dirtied. I think more memory than that is being dirtied. Am I not resetting correctly? Is it something wrong with my table stuff? Or is it a problem with this code? I'm going to move RCX five. Yeah, it's definitely pulling all those in. Dirty zero. Is it the way we do this? If we don't clear those bits, deadlock, who cares? Reset. Dirty zero. Let's let's report all accessed pages. Saying only one page is being accessed. Okay, maybe we're. Uh, it definitely. I think for the first case it worked, didn't it? Here, I'll just do this. Panic. First done. Single core. Okay, dirty zero for the first, that makes sense. And we wanna come up and around. And I'll say, if eh, 
on the first instance of having a start. What is the number of fuzz tests a measure of? In this case, it's the number of uh, resets of a virtual machine. Okay, first done, dirty zero. Okay, what if I, what if I get rid of the copy on write stuff? Is that, is that breaking us? So this is no copy on write. Dirty zero. Oh, we'll do this. We weren't, we weren't actually seeing what that number was. It should be five. One. It's downloading that many pages. It's writing to them. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Uh, dirty this, and I'm going to say print cow promote just so we can see when we're, oh, that's not the, that's mapping it. This is when we promote a page. I guess we're going directly to the written version. Yep, we're just going directly to the right. Maybe I need to set dirty on that. Whoa. Whoa. Whoa, it's, is it only reading those? First done. First done, print dirtied. Oh, RCX is five. No, don't I hard code it to five? I do. What the fuck? Kill that, reset it. Just in case it's like some stale stuff. Mm. What sort of dumb thing am I doing? Get rid of that. And I'll change this to 1024 just Sanity. Reset. It reloaded that. We ran. We then run. All right, let's print our exit reasons. We had an exception on that, which was due to execution. And we handle exceptions. Ooh, except for in this else case. Else, uh, oh, I think I'm getting fucked by that break loop. Uh, continue VM loop, continue VM loop. So at that stage, if we handled it, if we mapped it in, continue to the VM loop, 
and continue execution. Same with this case. So if it's not right and that, if it is right, at the end, we've mapped everything in. Continue the VM loop. Otherwise, we break the loop. Couldn't handle it. Okay, that's totally what it is. Cow promote. Dirtied one, though. Do I need to set those bits as dirtied? Does the VM not set the dirty bits upon re-execution? I feel like that's the only thing I could think of. Is that the VM would... One hundred, two hundred, three hundred, four hundred, five hundred, and then for dirtied, we will print, um, print dirty report x of adder dot zero, and this is access reports. This is any accessed page, and we're only seeing leet. Hmm. And let's put this back to the state that it's supposed to be. Oh, what did I have it as? DP, yeah. It's dirtied and present. Reset. So that says zero pages are dirtied. I'm, just, I'm pressing X to doubt there. Could we pull them in? They were for rights. They got promoted. It was cow. Go through all the bits. And where's cow promote? Let's do it when they map. So when they map that page. Oh, and there's the breakpoint. So. Ooh. Oh, the PTE happens to exist. So then that doesn't get registered. Oh. Um, let translation. Yep, we got a bug. That would cause us to potentially not map it and thus not register it. So this is. Shouldn't that still be registered though? No. No, it shouldn't. Hell yeah. All right, this is going to get the translation. And then uh, this will be the translation will be equal to translation. So attempt to translate the page. It may already be mapped read only. So if there is a translation for it, and there's a page, I think is the situation we want. So we're gonna look for um, uh, page table uh, translate. And that returns a mapping. And we care about the PTE and the page. Can I, how do I, how do I do this? Can I do this? I want something like that. It might be the other way around. 
mapping. This is from page table. Two ninety. Oops. Pfft, mapping. Missing fields. Is that actually how I do that? Noise. Page dot zero dot zero. So if there's already a page mapped here. Dude, that's so cool. That destructuring. Holy shit. If there's a P PTE and there's a page, then we're going to write to the PTE, which is a phys adder, and we're going to write the page, and we're going to promote it to writable. 100%. Dirty five. Good. We fixed it. We fixed it. Too dirty is this. Dirty, and then we'll set this to 345. And we'll see if we get that. 345. Okay, so it works. That'll dirty the amount. First done, dirtied, gone. Okay, so now this will print the results. Ooh, dirty report. Gotta get rid of those. My perf. Reset. Okay. That one like dropped really fast. I wonder if we, all right. I don't want to do a thousand. We'll just do a hundred for now. It'll probably be, um, it'll fall off into a linear line. Oops, reset. Numbers probably aren't going to be very good on non-real hardware. So on real hardware, yep, that's good. They're all dropping down. Nice. Ooh, and then that zero one just got smoked. There's some, there must be some case where, uh, somehow this number is becoming really large in some cases. And I, I don't know if that's in the case of a print. Maybe it is. Uh, so we can squeeze this in between when we record the stats. So now the print. So now the print is done between when we start the timer. And we'll see if any of them get dropped down to like a super low number. So that's what we saw is it, like they would just drop to like 200k kind of out of out of nowhere. They look stable now. I'm guessing that's literally what it was is they just like they printed and the print just throws their perf numbers out the window. But this is lining up to what we saw. And then nine pages if we look at nine pages 4096 bytes
divide that by 64, divide that by 2, multiply that by 4, 128 cycles, 1152 cycles per iter. It's 3.2 million. So they're not getting, they're not getting zapped. I feel like they're falling off oddly fast. We're not hitting memory anymore. So that's not happening. Uh, let's do a thousand. This is going to hurt some of the high end perf numbers too. Because now we have to scan all of memory to reflect that. Only getting 5,000 a second. Those numbers are climbing. Hmm. Oh, I guess the first few, oh, I know why. Um, we'll do like fuzz case plus one, uh, 900 mod 1000 the first fuzz cases are the ones that have to download the in uh download everything so they're like bias so low okay that looks correct the, the other one would converge to that over time but basically we had the expensive runs in the fast buckets so they had to work uh extra hard to kind of make up that cost so what i want to do is um I think what I want to do is too dirty is going to be equal to the fuzz case divided by a number. Maybe like 10,000. And I'll basically stick on one for a while and then we'll move to the next. Okay, let's go. Let's do, let's do 10 million. So this will be 10 million. So we'll see probably a couple prints and then a number will come in. A couple prints, a number will come in. There we go. So there's the zero. Once that hits 10 million, it'll move to the next where we'll try the one dirty, build up those stats, go to the next. There we go. Okay. And then what I think I'll do is I might just do it on every... The dirty page reset thing is not included in the fuzz timing. It is. This, this part. Here's where we compute the cost. It definitely is. Um, okay, and we're going to do let mute uh, stats uh, next stats, and we'll do uh, mm, this is the next dirty in let mute to dirty is zero. Next dirty is time future one second this will be too dirty and then i'll say if cpu rdtfc is greater than or equal to the next dirty then two dirty plus equals one next dirty is equal to time future one second in the future 
So now it's gonna spend one second on each level of dirtiness. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, so on and so forth. Okay. Um, and I think we'll just print the top, like, print the top 100. And then we'll print them in slightly different stats, just so we can graph them. We'll print 5 or 12.1. 12, we'll do, like, 16.4. And this is buckets and fuzz cases per second. Okay, and we don't want the pipe. But we do want some delineation. This is going to cause a lot of speed to the console, but that's okay, because that's not included in the benchmark. Oh, and we want this on the outside. All right, here we go. So it'll take 100 seconds to get this data, and then we'll be able to graph it. And I technically want to bring up other cores, and then we want to divide this by the number of cores. But I kind of don't want to lock on this. Yeah, I mean, I want that data, uh, so I'm going to have to do it. Why print that instead of print line? I don't like print line. I like I like explicit new lines. It also makes it easier to convert to uh, file writing if you need to. I don't know. I've I I like explicit uh, new lines quite a bit. All right. So this is printing only on core zero, and I want to share these stats between cores. So we'll do this by going static. Num tests fuzz cases. This is a atomic mm, lock cell new um static. Big brain stuff here. Atomic U64 new zero. So this is an atomic U64. And we only need like 1024. We don't need that many. Num test atomic U64. 10.24, there. Okay, those should exist now. Oh, and fuzz cases. Um, is that what I really wanted to type? Dirty cost. I don't know how I typed fuzz cases there. Uh, 182, dirty cost, dirty cost, dirtied, fetch, add, ordering, relaxed, and then dirty cost, dirtied, fetch, add, see, fetch, add, one, ordering, relaxed, Having to write the size of arrays and static types is kind of annoying. You can, um, if it's not a fixed size array, you can kind of do like the ref. Same with constants. Uh, dirty cost. Yeah, this is not dirty cost. This is the uh, num tests for dirtied. 194. Then this is dirty cost. Dot load. Ordering sequentially consistent. Uh, relaxed. Num tests bucket load ordering relaxed. OK. 
Okay, so this is now going to be the performance. And then loop. This is the performance with all cores online. So we'll see the threaded performance. And then we'll, we'll clip this down to 10 just so it doesn't scroll off the screen. Or like 25, just so we can look at it for now. One point two mil. Oh, um, yeah, and we've got eight cores, so we multiply that by eight. Uh, uh kernel source ACPI. Uh, I think I can get num cores, yeah. So we'll do ACPI num cores. So we will multiply uh, let FCPS is equal to FCPS times ACPI num cores, because we divide it down by the load, which is not fair, or the num tests. So that's the per core performance, or per. That's the per thread performance. So this is the whole system performance. Yeah, if you do the, like the slice, the reference base things. Hell yeah. Okay. So now we have numbers and we will Print these, that's false case, and then we'll do, we'll just go to 200, and then I'm gonna hit the head quick, and we'll let these numbers come in. Reset. Can I T this? T. Data.text. I'm going to hope that that's working. Cat data.text. It is. All right. I'll be right back. How's that data looking? Probably almost have enough data to see that characteristic curve. So we can start working on graphing it. Uh, stream term, vim plot dot plots, plots data dot text using one, two with lines. Uh, set x label, uh, set term x no uh, persist, uh, size 
1920. Yeah, we'll do like 1440 by 900. Set the X label, number of uh, dirtied pages. And set Y label, uh, uh, fuzz cases per second. Uh, VM enter dirty N. VM exits, resets, regs, and mem. And set title. This is going to be um, uh, this is the um, this is like the mac uh, maximum non non EPT. VM reset speeds. We're, we're probably within a, a fucking factor of like 20% of what's possible. And we'll say this is a Xeon. Let's grab that information from this. So all of our data is in. Uh, so I can get this from the website probably easiest. I don't have a web page up. Oh, I do. open up this do you ever use an IDE to program I do not I just always about I'm always about that text editor all right we look gonna look at inventory information for this and Xeon this uh, hyper threading on uh, turbo on. Okay. So we should have our data. We can just stop this. We're going to move that data to uh, data saved text. <laughs> it's some good shit right there. Data saved, and then we just have to format this to be correct for GNU plot. And so we'll just do uh, D4300, D4300, D4385. Okay, so that's the last entry. DOS to Unix, I don't have it. Genu plots p plot. I think it can handle those. Okay, nice. That means we have to log scale x, uh, log scale y. Beautiful. Uh, let's log scale x. Okay. So now we have the curve we actually care about. Um, then we'll set grid, uh, stream term, oops, uh, genie plots, set this to floating, genie plots, plot dot plot, okay, and then we'll set, Set no, uh, no key. I think it's no key. Okay. Those look pretty good. Fuzz cases per second. Vim enter dirty n. And that's on that. Hyperthreading on and turbo on. I think that's pretty descriptive. Can I request the first CVE in your unnamed folk TP server? Doesn't actually jail anything, it just yells at you. That's that's not meant to jail you. It's a suggestion. How does it not jail it? 
Oh yeah, because I don't, I don't, I don't uh, return or continue. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. I like that. Uh, ten out of ten. <laughs> it just lets you know. <laughs> it just lets you know. Good bug. Good bug. Um, okay, so we have the data. I think that's enough to see the curve. And I, I don't know. I kind of want to try uh, QT. QT has much better fonts. Honestly, you just can't really beat SVG when it comes to these graphs. What about WXT? I think WXT looks like shit. Ooh. Oh, that's actually pretty nice. Oh, I like that. That's good. And it resizes well, reticks those things. Okay, so I'm gonna set the um, set the x ticks zero point one. I think. What's the trick? A uh, zero point zero one. Uh, X ticks. Isn't that how I set the number of ticks? I always for I always forget this. Um, Genu plots uh, log scale X ticks. Um, yeah, it's the difference. So, 0 0.1, right? Oh, I, I'm not showing... The closer it is to 1... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because this needs to be like 1.01. .01, and now we'll see a fuck ton. Yeah! That's why. Okay, X ticks. We'll go like 1.4. We're just trying to find like what looks good. What's readable? Uh, 1.8. Okay, probably should just go with like 2.0 then, just so the numbers are. There we go. <laughs> One, two, four, eight. Now our uh, part is a two, which is cool. Uh, set y ticks 2.0. Okay, and then we want to set. Set X range one to this, or Y range one to that, and X range. We're gonna set zero. Uh, we can't see the zero because it's log scale. Fuck. How did I view a zero on log scale? Wow, I was expecting that to compress more. Um, so I guess we don't set don't set Y range. We do on X range from zero, and we'll set this to a four. Okay, still just a little bit. All right, that actually looks pretty good. Most case per second, VM enter, dirty VM, dirty end, VM exits. Um, okay. Uh, dirty pages, I guess we'll say. Dirty pages. When are we gonna see Vim running in my OS? Never. <laughs> There's no reason. And this is, uh, all cores. All cores, HT on, turbo on. You know what, we'll normalize it. Uh, this is per core. Per core. Those cases per second per core, and then th we'll just divide this by four, because we have four cores. <laughs> Woo, we did it. 
I do want to set... I do want to have log seal X, but I can't, I can't. How do I... <sighs> I want to log seal X, but I can't. That is an aggressive decline. 230 pages. How big is 230 pages? That's not even a meg. That's not even a meg, man. 200, 4096. I'm restoring those. Is that going to be using a mem copy? That just seems really slow. Twenty thousand multiplied by that. Oh, that's a that's a decently sized number. It's fifteen gigabytes per second. Okay, that's actually a pretty good number. That's fifteen gigs a second of reset. <laughs> okay, that's that's actually probably respectable. <laughs> That's still not, uh, we're still in cash. We'll be in L2. We'll be just exhausting L2. That's pretty solid. Um, per core, hyper-threading on. Yeah, I think these numbers are actually good, then. So it's basically just your, your memory bandwidth. This is probably, like, you're diminishing out of uh, L1. And then that will basically just flatline to the speed of your RAM. What's the end goal? What do you want to run in the OS? We're going to use the OS mainly for research. So we're not actually going to run anything in it. Like what we did right now when we uh, made this graph. Um, I do want to set this log scale. How the fuck do I... Log scale X... I don't know. Maybe I. I want to be able to include zero though, and I can't because. Turns out log zero is like a hard problem. Um. Genie plots log scale x zero. I mean, I can skew it. I can, I can literally do this and set the X range from one beyond and like that, <laughs> that works, but now it's wrong. <laughs> um, but I just want to subtract one from those. <laughs> um... And then that's to 128. Yeah, we'll do log scale. Since we do 200, we'll do log scale. Uh, okay. 1.4, 1.5. It's kind of gross. But, yeah, I need to... How do I do that? The x-axis may be drawn. By default, they're off. Since we have y is zero as the axis, drawn visibly. Hmm. Hmm. God, there's got to be a better way, right? How do 
How do I do that? What's interesting is you see this slope here. This is uh, this slope is basically like L1 cache, and this is uh, this is like L2, and then this is gonna be like starting to get into L3, and then memory will be another uh, dip. Kind of interesting there, actually. Well, this Xeon E3 actually has pretty low memory bandwidth, I think, and I have one dim in there. <laughs> I I think I literally have one one dim in there <laughs> so i'm not using any of the channels <laughs> this machine is so nerfed <laughs> um yeah god what am i doing uh how many channels does this have no, it's a it's a V something, V six. I was about to say it's not it's not discontinued. Two memory channels, thirty seven point five. What were we running for resets? Fifteen point two five. If we take thirty seven point five and divide it by two, we get eighteen point seven five. We're we're running just a little bit under memory bandwidth. Um. So we'll put that in here. One dim, uh, one, uh, we want that information. Yeah, it's, we got, we got one dim. We got, we got one fucking dim. <laughs> 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 One. <laughs> I can't. I can't believe we have one dim in there. <laughs> we're 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 hitting fucking memory bandwidth rates. Oh my god. Do I have another stick at twenty four hundred ECC sitting somewhere? So I can throw one in there. God, that's just, we're like, we're literally just bottlenecking on RAM. Uh, I mean, not necessarily. We're still in like L3 cache limits, so we shouldn't be. Well, all the VMs have different ones. We're storing from the same memory. What's my, what's my commit load to L3? How much L3 do I have? How much are we exceeding L3 by? At the high end of the range, we're writing 819k. We have eight different threads running with those copies. That's 6.5 megs. And then one extra copy of the originals. Does it even mention the cache? How is that how is that not a thing? How is that not a thing we talk about here? What the fuck? Fuck. Oh, eight megs of smart cash. Yeah, so we're still under L3. Yeah, we shouldn't be passing L3. We should be fine. Now we can we can put the go fast juices in there. Uh LTO fat and uh Target CPU native. Uh, can't use target CPU. Uh, cargo Tomal uh, target CPU. Do I just have to set that as Rust flags? Um. Name LTO. Okay. Um, package. Profile. Uh, 
LTO fat. Hmm, there's no way to do that. Um, wow, and then that changes. Dude, that's fucked, man. Something's really fucked about the assembler, but we'll do this and we'll say it's not Intel. I think it's because I use Globalism, but whatever. Um, and I'll just print the top. I guess we'll print the last few, which are 80K. Um, for bucket in 190 to this. And then we'll have two, di two dirty. We'll start at 190 is where we'll start our tests. One second should be enough time for those to pull those into cash. So let's see what we got here. Z. 80. Basically no speed up there. Yeah, we'll have to use a cargo config. Um, kernel cargo toml. Kernel cargo config. Rust flags. C target CPU is Skylake. This might actually not boot. Because I don't think we set AVX. And this is going to use AVX. Yep. That's going to try and do some AVX stuff. But if we take a look at what that generated for uh, mem move now. Yeah, it's using AVX2, which is good. So what I want to do is... I want to go into um, bootloader source assembly routines. And I'm gonna yoink them from uh, kernel uh, sushi roll bootloader source uh, stage zero. No, source assembly routines. And we're just gonna enable OSX save and enable AVX2. This is just a test. It's just a. It's just. It's just a test. Before we enter into our kernel, we're gonna set these flags. Hopefully we have nothing to clobber in those. I don't think so. Set that. Don't have AVX 512. This is going to be AVX 2. Car on clean. Car run. Uh, do we rely on any of these registers? We shouldn't. Oh, RCX RDX. Those are our parameters. RCX RDX, and then I'll clobber those guys. No problem. RBX should be fine. I think I think this is acceptable. No cam today. I, I keep turning on and off whenever I feel like it. <laughs> oh, yeah, I didn't want to do that. Um, anyways. This should now work. Yes. Okay, so we have to reboot this machine to get the new bootloader. But this will um, enable, enable AVX2. And then all the cores come up, of course. And then we get to see the AVX2 performance numbers. It's really not that big of a difference, to be honest. Um, Because it was 80k before. This is probably going to be like 85k. <laughs> it's, it's probably going to be unnoticeable in terms of the perf difference. 
The memory is aligned. Yeah, I could look at what that's doing. That one stick of RAM. <laughs> Here we go. AVX2 enabled. Uh, that's fine. Ignore that. 85! Oh, called it! Called it! <laughs> Fucking called it! <laughs> okay, let's do a full sweep. Too dirty is zero. Then we're gonna sweep to from zero to 200. That full LTO build time. Now we're gonna tee that off and we'll reboot. And now we wait 200 seconds for the new data. And while we wait for that data to come in, we undo all the changes that we made. Uh, git status, git checkout, kernel cargo config, git checkout, kernel cargo toml. <laughs> so those are just for testing. For bandwidth numbers, a 4K aligned mem copy, you should be capping L1 bandwidth. One is an L1, yeah. None. Lots of nans. Lots of nans. I probably should have an optimized 4K copy that doesn't use mem copy. Like something that's literally designed for pages. Like it just, it literally knows it's a fucking page. Um, and it doesn't call mem copy, which then does alignment checks and tries to sync up on certain boundaries. Like, hey, this is 4K aligned, 4K in size, go. So maybe, maybe we'll do some tests on that. See if we can get this stuff faster. Um... Uh, walking the page table, this is going to be a non-zero cost. It's not too bad because we uh, we basically just walk kind of adjacent. Yeah, should be relatively cheap to do that. Four, it's it's three cycles plus four cycles plus three cycles. Um, okay, so 10 cycles per page table entry. Okay. So we'll see, how much do you think this perf's gonna change, y'all? We'll, we'll graph the two lines, because we can. <laughs> but yeah, for each dirty page, blah, blah, blah. Maybe I should mark that inline. It doesn't really matter. That function called is not a big deal. So what kind of things are we having cost us? Here's our reset code. Get the offset into that. We get a mutable slice for the underlying page. We then compute the number of bytes to copy, and then we copy that many bytes from the mapping. Like, there are technically if statements here that we could get rid of. Pretty negligible. So it looks like it's just slightly faster across the board. Uh, copy data, data, um, avx2.txt. 
So then, where we're plotting stuff, we can plot AVX2, oops, AVX2, data, AVX2, this. Have you ever been bitten by Rust aliasing rules? Not really. Not to my knowledge. D3400. Uh, 34,000. 34, or 30, ah, 3207. That should be one good bingo. Slash. So it's just a little bit better across the board. D, D, G, D, cap, G. I feel like I've tried that and it's never worked, but I don't know. Because I use I used that to go to the top of the file. Or, oh, cap, G is to the end. I don't want to delete to the end. I want to delete to the top. Maybe I'm doing it wrong. Um... Uh, yeah, I don't like that. I don't, I don't want to do the transform on this one as is, and then we can't log scale X if we do that. Set X ticks to... 10. Interesting. You see some stuff like going down here. Boop, 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 boop. Kind of cool. All right. Um, little wobblies. 4,096. All right, so we should be able to reboot this, and this will be back to the slow mode. Uh, card on clean, card on. Oh, I still have LTO fat? No, I don't. Okay, so what do we do? We touch every page in the VM. Yeah, I'm guessing most of my time is resetting. So what's the, what's the fastest that I could DGG? We'll delete from the... Oh, okay. I never used GG. I don't know why I should. Maybe I do. I don't... Mm, I might, actually. Um, so, we could try and make our mem copy faster, but... Here's what we're going to do. We're going to not copy the memory at all. This will give us the costs uh, in this case it doesn't matter if we don't reset dirty because we're just writing to it we're not actually using the dirtied memory and then we'll start from 190 and so now we're gonna be able to see what the speeds are if we didn't do a copy uh, and this will allow us to see if there's like something else that's a factor here Okay, reset. 164K. 
173. 164 is that's the first one that has to download the pages from the network. Okay. So basically 170K. We're running 80K right now. So there's like basically losing 2x our perf. Now that means we're actually. Yeah. And that's just walking that page table, I guess. It's a pretty surprising amount of only a 2x. I guess I have to touch all the pages inside the VM. All right, what do you think the fastest 4K copy is <laughs> that we could do? <laughs> okay. We're going to pass in two registers. R, which is the PSL. Oh, and we can copy the full size. Uh, PSL has pointer. You can do 132 byte load and 132 byte store per cycle sustained. Um, so we'll do a read uh, or a register. And this will be the mapping offsets as pointer. Okay, memory clobber. Oh, this is LLVM assembly. Actually, two loads. Yep. I'm familiar. Um. So we can do 16 bytes at a time, AVX, uh, or we're doing SSE right now. So we'll do um, 16 bytes at a time. We can do aligned loads and stores. 4096 divided by 16, 256. So we'll do a move XMM0, uh, move double quad word aligned from zero plus ah. but I think this would probably be about as fast as you'd be able to get it'd be 16 or uh, one times 16 zero times 16 two times 16 three times 16 and then we just store those out. I've seen on Knight's Landing that I get a little bit extra from going more unrolled than this, but it shouldn't really matter on this. Uh, and we're doing four at a time. So we got to do 64 of these. No, do we just fucking do this? Technically, all these can be constants, but we'll do uh, XOR XX add EAX 16 times 4. This clobbers EAX. This clobbers XMM0. 
X and M1, X and M2, X and M3. And we'll just add racks onto this. Okay. I'm just being lazy. These could all be consts. I think a loop would probably be faster than fully unrolled like I'm doing here. Nevertheless, that should perform the copy. Zero, one, two, three from zero, and then restoring into, it's actually the other way. It's uh, zero is the, where we want to write to, and one is what we're copying from. Okay, let's see if this makes things any faster. So there were like 85K with the AVX2. Why is that stuck? That fault, did that crash? That crash? I just fucked up that AVX2 data on accident. Not that big of a deal. Um, zero, one, two, three. Zero, one, two, three. Zero, one, two, three. Memory, EAX. Racks at EAX. We do that, uh, so that will end up doing uh, 16 times 4 times 64. Memory EAX XM0. I don't know why that got stuck. Let's try this. Okay, that works. So this should work. Reset. There we go. 82, 89, 86. Yeah, it's probably about as fast as we can get. <laughs> probably about as fast as we can get. Um, so we can comment out all of this stuff. And then we'll load directly into RDI and RSI. And we'll do a move RCX. 4096 divided by 8, rep moves Q. Don't need these clobbers. We need an RCX clobber. RDI and RSI. So we'll see what this can do. I don't know what that deadlock was. Why did that fuck off? I feel like we did something that really hurt stability and I don't know what. Um. Memory clobber. RCX is clobbered. Technically, this is a CC clobber as well. Great project. Thank you so much, Alex. Should I get a PR merchant to me, Malik, that fixes a typo in a comment? Does that give me bragging rights? Oh, for sure. Typo fixes are like one of the, one of the best ways to get your uh, street cred up. Move that into RCX rep move skew. Oh, we gotta mark these as clobbers. 
Oh shit. I don't think we beat it. We might have we might have fucked our system. We probably did. Oh, luckily that happens. So let's see if this works. Yep. All right. Now 94. Yeah, this is the fastest. 100k there. So like I just yeah, I don't really know why it was slow when we implemented it in memmove, but I think that's the fastest we're going to be able to move pages. Track dirtied. Slice fizz mute. See a uh, kernel source mm. Slice fizz. So we want to inline. It's getting inlined anyways. Um. Then this offset. We can do uh, get unchecked. That'll do the unsafe slice. Save every little every little cycle we can. Get unchecked offset. We have to do that. We have to do this. It's about as fast as we can possibly make that. Yeah, about 90k. Pretty good. Alright, so we'll run... Let me do some more averaging. I'm going to see... If I go 5 seconds on these, how much does that change the results? It's quite a bit more stable. It's quite a bit more stable. Are these always decreasing? So they should be. Okay, they're not always decreasing. I think one second's good enough then. All right, now we get the data for the last time. We have our fast-ass copy. <laughs> Can't really get faster than that, it seems. Should make sense. That's a strong hint to the um, CPU. We clobber RDI, RSI, RCX, CCN memory. And this is volatile. We can't get rid of this copy. That's it. I think we're good. The only thing we could do is kernel cargo toml LTO is fat. Just see what we get here. I don't think this is really going to do anything. Okay, that got stuck again. Do do do. Internal interrupt. All right, it should be up pretty soon here. Doing one second on those, starting at 190. Do, 
Here we go. Yeah, I felt fat LTO didn't do anything. Oops. Build everything. Okay, we'll do a hundred. Uh, we'll start from zero. This is gonna be our. This is gonna be our data that we care about. We'll get that going. Yeah, it's getting stuck. I don't. Oh, that's going. We unstucked it. Nice. All right. So this is the. Here we go. Uh, this RDI, RSI, clobber those, dirty those. And yeah, the max room to speed up is 2x. So that basically means that our overheads are, hmm. Yeah, I guess just walking those page tables and the bitmap based page tables, that's causing more stuff to get pulled into cache. So we're actually probably hurting the performance at some point because we're reading more metadata. It's kind of interesting. You can multi-line edit in a row by doing control V and then shift uh, cap I and A to write what you want. Add to the selection. Yeah, I always forget to do that. I mean, it's just not in my muscle memory yet. I think I've tried it a couple times. I fuck up half the time, so I kind of gave up. I'm just not used to it yet. Is that for fuzzing, or are you going to have some kind of pass-through to an outer Linux Windows kernel for all the stuff userland is expecting? Uh, it's, it's for fuzzing. Uh, if that is for fuzzing, uh, it will not have a pass through. So I'll emulate all the syscalls in this mode. And then in the, um, I mean, I'm going to literally have Linux running under this hypervisor at some point. That's what it will, that'll, that's what it will eventually turn into. I shouldn't be getting, I don't think I'm getting extra VM exits. I'm going to just print my VM exits just to make sure I shouldn't be getting, shouldn't really be getting any extra spew here. Reset this. Breakpoint, pause. So you can kind of see the progress that it's making when it's pulling those down every time. Hopefully we're not hurting performance by having that. I mean, we, we are downloading one page every second. I can't imagine that's a huge amount of perf loss. I don't think it is. I don't think it is. All right. These are the these are the numbers. Okay. So, copy data dot text to data saved. Um, don't need to plot the AVX two stuff. Data.text at the end. Is it? Isn't it? What's to go to the top? GG. Oh, it's GG. There we go. Trying QQ for some reason. Um, 
And we want that on data saved. Do, 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 do. Okay. Uh, now we can genie plot, plot a plot. Nice, just got a little ripple in there, but that's fine. So this is the per number of resets per second versus number of dirtied pages. And then we'll set that Do I want per core? I kind of don't want per core. I kind of like these numbers more. Um, what is that number? I want that last label to show up. Set Y range from colon to 10 million. Okay. 13 million. There we go. So that's all cores. Next thing you should learn is CIW and CIW for change inner word. That's new to me. Um, okay, so... This looks pretty good. 200 pages dirtied. Pretty, that's pretty fucking good. This is, uh, um, four cores, eight threads. Hyper threading on. Four cores, eight threads, hyperthreading on, one dim at that. Most Vim is a language block post mentioned CIW. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I think this data looks pretty good. I don't think there's a huge amount of room for improvement. If I literally don't do a copy, I have a 2x. <laughs> so I think it's safe to say there's probably not a lot of room for improvement. 10 million VM resets per second. And then that feathers down to 90k a second. Yeah, so at the very end, it's about 90,000 90, a second on all the cores. Um, I feel like that's pretty solid. What's the fork perf on Linux? I don't think fork scales. Unfortunately, I don't have a beefier server than this. We'll do more benchmarks. Um, we'll do more benchmarks when I get my new servers. I haven't gotten my quote yet. So, kind of waiting on Supermicro on that. Not much I can do other than just wait. But, yeah. I think I'm happy with this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap this up. This is going to be my stream for the day. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. I'm going to get some sleep. It's fucking 9 a.m. So... Hope you all enjoyed it. This is a, a lot of dev. Let's get this commit in this current state. Get status. Get commit. Am uh, VTX uh, performance uh, reset performance tracking. Get push. Oh, raid someone. Thank you. Thank you. You fucks. <laughs> Did you sleep? I didn't. All right, I gotta find someone. Oh, I gotta find someone to raid. Um, science and technology. I don't. I don't know too many people. I think that's that's what makes. How am I fucking? 
top on science and technology. That's so fucking weird. That's so weird. Um, we might just pick some like random Persian. Oh, there is some German. Oh, these aren't sorted. I see. I don't know what the fuck are people doing. Someone's doing live hacking. Got someone learning some Metasploit stuff. Um, Geohut, I'm not, I'm not gonna read Geohut. It's kind of, there's not really a reason. Soding. Yeah, fuck it. We'll do that. I will we'll send y'all over. How do I fucking read? Here we go. See y'all around.